Hello. Happy Friday, friends. How's everyone doing? <laughs> All right, Anne. Look at this duck yeah. sauce. It's like, it went creamy. It it's looks so, so delicious. Nice. It's so tasty. Yeah, we were like, um, I don't know if I want to give that to AM. <laughs> it looks so dang good. But yeah, welcome in, friends. You're going to use that for risotto? Holy. Sounds delish. Hope everyone is having a good day so far. I feel a little bit sleepy. I don't know. It's just in my eyes. But other than that, I'm doing great. I am doing great. So hello to Bonk. Welcome in. Good morning. Yeah, it slips quietly in the door. <laughs> Welcome Ginger Tea. It's good to see you. First thing as well, Cookie. Hello to Kimmers. We got a baby Orca in here with us. Hello Parvati. Who else? We got Ampsand is drinking some bone broth on the men. So we'll send you some love and healing vibes through the internet then. Hopefully, I'm sure you'll feel them in a few moments. For sure. And yes, we got a Sammy in here with us as well today. We've been busy, busy. It's been a busy like last 24 hours, but all good things, definitely. Hi, Lauren. You'll be here, but quiet. Been working through a panic attack. Oh my gosh. Let me know if you need to chat about anything after stream, okay? I've not had one in a few years now but i i know what it's like so it's always nice to maybe talk to someone that has gone through that experience so i'm here for you if you need lauren for sure other than that cozy on up just know that we are here for you and other than that just take care of yourself today eat lots of good food stay hydrated and Get your sleeps. I think that's the, some of the most healing things you can do. Hello to Officer Larva as well. Yeah, howdy y'all. Happy Friday, dude. And Misty Woods, hello. Mythical Suki, hope you're well. Yeah, you're very welcome, Lauren. I know that's really tough stuff, trust me, but I mean, the most important part is that we make it through to the other side, right? Okay. I got some delicious black coffee this morning. So cheers to that. I've been slowly working through it. Feeling energized and pumped up. We have a few awesome recipes linked for our cook today as well that are also in Discord. So I'll just post those up. There are three. I know the first one is really long, but it is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite chowder recipes. It is not like the typical New England clam chowder that is like thick and creamy. This one is called a Pacific Rim chowder. So we're going to be using salmon, shrimp and clams in it today. And then the broth for the chowder is very different. If you think about Pacific Rim, it's like kind of bringing in all of the Asias together and flavorings like that, right? So uh, the broth is a spiced coconut and chipotle mixture. It's really, really good. We'll put peas, corn, mirepoix into that. And yeah, all the fish goes in at the end. So it stays nice and moist and doesn't dry out on us. And to go along to the side of that is just some fluffy potato buns because I got a lot of potato flakes to use up and they're really good for dipping for soup. So that'll be that little first course, let's say, or our savory route for today. And then for dessert, not sure if you guys saw us posting in Discord last night. <laughs> I think it was around 8 p.m. Sammy's like, I think we maybe need to try those cookies for tomorrow. Oh, those cookies are so good. I think we need to test out the recipe just to make sure they work, you know? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but we did, and they were absolutely delicious. Like one of the best cookie recipes ever. And it just like got our minds going to all of these sick, dirty, delicious spots. I'm like, what if you switched out the dark chocolate for like a caramel chocolate from it's Calibo that makes the Caramelia, I think. Yeah. It's like a caramel chocolate or yeah, just switch out the chocolate for anything. It's like the cookie is so crisp and buttery, but like light still. It's so, so good. Yeah, sick, dirty and delicious. 
We're sassy today, Bonk. It's Friday. We've made it through the week. It's been so busy. Baba Louie, welcome back. Good to see you. So yeah, that's our menu for today, guys. We got all of the links up for that stuff. The only thing that you will not see on today's stream is us mixing up the cookie dough. So that was all done last thing yesterday on stream. So just pop back to the VOD if you want to see how we mixed it up. And I'll just quickly grab the logs from the fridge to show you how they're looking. But I think before we get into cookie land, we should probably mix up the dough for the potato buns, right? Because that always takes a little bit of time to rise up. And just in case anything crazy happens, it's nice to have time to fix things. <laughs> okay, so here, here is our cookie dough that we formed into these logs yesterday. We made the cookies bigger than what they guided. So they said two, two inch to two and a quarter inch diameter. I think we times it by two-ish, I would say. So this is what Sam cut from yesterday and it looks just absolutely amazing. It should not be allowed, let's just say that. So before we cut those and then put them on the tray to bake, we have to first roll them in an egg wash and then it gets coated with sugar on the outside. And then we cut them up, put them on the tray and they can get baked. And these took almost 20 minutes. Yesterday we baked them at 360 degrees Fahrenheit. So popped up the temp just a touch because the cookies are bigger, right? But yeah, we'll do the potato bun dough first so that can get proof in and then we'll switch back to the cookies. And that's our big pot right there. Sammy just washed it up for us is we did our big transfer of the stock this morning. So we can use the red pot for all the chowder today. As far as chowder amounts goes, I think we'll make minimum eight liters. Is there's five Five liters going out the door today, one for each of us. So that's seven. So for sure, minimum eight liters, but it'll probably turn out more to like 10. Oh, and I'll also show what I pulled out for the, the chowder as well. Our fishes and our shrimps. It's gonna be so good. And this recipe is really, really easy too. Hello, JK. Question about the food truck. In the truck, will you go around selling food? If you do, don't you need permits? So you can get permits like the day of, if that's what we want to do, JK. But we are going to, I think first operate not doing it that way is we want to still just be cooking for our friends and family for the first bit until we get really comfortable. And then we're going to decide after that is the thing about the pandemic still is COVID's not over and it's been really hard on the hospitality industry. So we're kind of waiting it out to see what ends up happening before we really commit to one thing or the other. Yeah, it's pronounced chowda, Frenchie. <laughs> yeah, do I need a passport to enter into cookie land? Yeah, you need the vaccination passport. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, let's look at this. So Zach caught this nice coho salmon last year. So I just packed up the two fillets with like the flesh touching each other. So there's a little coho salmon. We also have this beautiful piece of spring salmon that we'll dice up and put into there. And then just one bag of nice large prawns. And then we got two cans of clams to pop in there. Which I'll just grab now. Whole baby clams is what we want to see. And just packed in water. But they are a bit salty, so just kind of remember that when you're seasoning the soup. Does Canada have a vaccine passport? I know that they were talking about it. I don't watch the news at all so I just get informed of what I see off of social media scrolling but I'm pretty sure Trudeau was looking into that as well nice cookie yeah back to in-person piano lessons on August 2nd that'll come quick you know it 
but that will definitely come quick. Okay, let's make up a little list for ourselves so we don't forget anything and then away we go. So 10 liters of chowder is over 21 pints of chowder. <laughs> um, sand. And we are selling, so the price point we did per one liter worth. So just for size reference, not everyone knows what a liter is, right? So this is a liter, AKA the size of my head. <laughs> One liter of that, I think I did for 15 bucks with two buns. Pretty inexpensive considering how amazing the fish quality is that we're using in it. Okay, so first things first, our buns, I'll just put at the top of the list. We will put, make the dough, obviously. And then typically it proofs for one hour at a warmer spot in the house. Otherwise, if it's a cooler spot, it'll just take a little bit longer to proof up as you want it to be doubled in size when you start from the dough ball. Cool, bonk. Sounds fun, guys. And then obviously after we proof for the one hour, then we can go ahead and divide the buns. What do I need for bunners today? I just realized I also didn't do up Sammy's reservation list. He's gonna be upset. So two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. So I'm gonna do a double recipe of buns then, just so we have enough for us as well. Yeah, one, two. Two, four, six. Oh, sorry, there is six liters of chowder for today. So definitely we're making 10. That way we have a bit extra. Okay, so double bun. Because typically one recipe of buns makes a dozen. So we'll divide into 24 then. And place them on all the sheet pans because they finish proofing on there for about 15 minutes or so while the oven heats up. Just pop this recipe up for myself as well. We've made these hamburger potato buns before. Recipe is awesome. And we've also had one of our long-term viewers, Palsh. He makes these all the time now for himself and he loves them. So prep time on the buns, 20 minutes, bake time, 15 to 20 minutes, but total time about two and a half hours. And I usually leave myself three hours if I'm going to make bread from scratch. Oh, so this yields six buns only. So I got to times the recipe by four then for myself today. Sweet. They get baked. I was just looking for that 350 Fahrenheit. So we'll do everything outside on the Traeger for like it said, 15 to 20 minutes. Okay, awesome. That's the buns. And then I'm thinking after that, since we'll have the Traeger on and hot, we might as well get the cookies into it right after, right? So cookies next on the list then. We have to egg wash and roll them. And then slice. So we need minimum nine. <laughs> That's not hard to do though, right? And then bake, like I said, so we did 360 F and I think it took 18 minutes just for that size. Cause they're bigger. Okay. After we get the cookies done, cause that'll be pretty quick. Then we can just work into the chowder and everything should be good after that. I would say. So chowder. And then last thing on the list, a little pre-prep for tomorrow, which I think is important. If you've ever done a roasted pork belly in your life, you know that it does turn out better if you season and score it the night before and just let it sit in the fridge overnight to kind of air dry on the top. And that's what crisps it up really nice on that outer layer. So I'll just put pork belly prep. So it's a little bit of a dry brine, let's say. 
Okay, I'm going to quickly make Sam's reservation list while I'm here too, just so it doesn't get confusing for us later. Quick sip of cuppa. Question about oven temps, Orca. For the biscuit recipe, it says oven temp is 218 Celsius. Can you use 220C or rather go to 210? You have a microwave combo, so not too big. I think I would go the higher temp just because of how you described the oven. It probably doesn't hold the heat the same way that a bigger one does, right? And just from experience, yeah, you would want to go higher than lower. If you go lower, you do risk the biscuit kind of just spreading out, right? And not baking proper so definitely go higher orca and you'll be good yeah totally lauren nothing like some crispy pork we're we're doing up a whole pork belly today okay f for f friday and i will also say it's a beautiful sunny day outside again just blue skies shining so 5 p.m we got one dinner one dessert for our good friend, Paul. And he loved his duck dish last night as well, guys. So happy to report on that. 5.30, we got Paul's dad coming by <laughs> for one dinner, one dessert. Five forty-five, we got Geraldine. For two dinners only, no desserts. The neighbors must have not found out about the menu. <laughs> Usually if she tells her neighbors the menu, she messages like two days later and is like, I need to add this on. And then we're also feeding my parents today. So upstairs is two dinners, one dessert. So totals always got to do the total one two three four five six six times dinner one, two, three times dessert which everyone gets three cookies per order boom that's for the sammy man we'll pop that to the side and away we go guys so I'm going to start by getting all the stuff out for the buns and then away we go. You've never made pork belly, Mary? It is, or it can be quite fatty, obviously, but it does take time to render it out. So like tomorrow, it's probably going to roast for about three, three and a half hours, I would say. Yeah, triggering it for sure, Sam. That's going to look amazing, I'm sure. Why did you leave the professional kitchens? That is like the m best question ever. And I'm so happy that you ask it. And before I answer, I'm just gonna say thank you, Wall Street Brian for the Prime Gaming sub. Four months already. That's amazing, dude. So happy you found us. And I hope you've been well. That deserves four hypes for the four months. Okay, so I ended up leaving professional kitchens. I would say mainly, for the quality of life, for sure. That would be my number one priority, right? So I just got sick of working weekends and working 12 hour shifts without breaks at all. And like sometimes maybe getting a meal in between there. You're like lucky if you get a meal. <laughs> yeah, the sad face slipped in. It's okay, hot Carl. I was like, is Carl okay? <laughs> And the temp on the trigger for the pork belly tomorrow is we start higher. So usually like 400, I would say, just to get it brown in. And then I turn it down to 275 and it goes for about two and a half hours at that. And another reason that I left the restaurant is the pay is really terrible. Is like I have over 10 years of experience working in restaurants. I've gone to school for two years, so paid for all of that first. And obviously I've spent a lot of hours working in some high-end spots and you don't really see an increase in pay over the years. So like over the last 10 plus years, it's you get paid the exact same thing no matter where you go. And I was like, I feel like my effort and my experience is getting wasted. 
Like, yeah, I can cook food for people, but are they actually appreciating it? Because there's so many times in a restaurant where someone's just like, I didn't like this. And it's like, well, why? And it's like, ah, I just didn't like it. It's like, well, you're wasting food and you read what was on the menu. So why'd you order it? Just like stuff like that, right? So I hate wasting food. I hate seeing it get thrown out. It was also getting super stressful at the time I was working in a really small restaurant the last place. And there's so many allergies now. I feel really bad for the people, but it's even more stressful for the chef to have to cook for tables that have like maybe three or four different allergies at the one sitting. So just all of that stuff kind of added up. And then we just took the plunge. I thought, hey, why not see how streaming on Twitch is? Maybe we can teach somebody something, right? Is that was the other thing I realized working in restaurants is not a lot of people know how to cook great food for themselves. Yes, they can cook boxed or packaged things, but people deserve great food. You don't realize how good it makes you feel, right? So all of those things, I hope that was a good answer. And yeah, if you don't get any tip share from the servers, it's, it's the worst ever. What do I use as a base for my chowder? Mm, the recipe today is kind of different. So it gets like canned chipotle in it. It also gets coconut milk. And other than that, yeah, you can use fish stock if you have it around for sure. I would always recommend that or a veggie broth. Anytime we don't add water, it's always going to be more delicious, right? Yeah, those are such crazy stories, officer. Both like front of house and back of house get treated not so good, let's say. Is the Canadian restaurant scene the same as USA? Low wages and hopefully, yep, 100% Orca, 100%. I just saw, I don't know if you guys know who Leon Brunson is. He did stream on Twitch for a little bit, but he's opening his own restaurant now. He made a tweet the other day and he's like, I just saw my old restaurant that he worked at for four years that everyone in the kitchen just left out of the blue. And he's like, you can't really blame them because he worked there for four years and got paid the same wage as everyone else. He's like, it has to change. Can't keep doing this. You've gotten into very interesting discussions with chefs that think chowder should be made with chicken stock. I was eyeing this up on the stove. I might sneak a little bit in still. Pickle hedgie is our poultry broth that we have is it does kind of give that extra oomph. Oh, it's all good, Mary. Yeah, don't be sorry for the question. So I've never tempted the pork belly when I take it out because you need it to be like basically jiggly. If you cook it to 165 F, that's not going to be enough. Yes, it will be done, but it's going to be very chewy and tough. So that's why you got to go so many hours until you start breaking down the connective tissue inside and the fat renders into the meat and makes it really unctuous. So I would aim for probably closer to like 185 F or 200 is what we usually cook like our brisket to outside and it gets nice and jiggly. Okay, let's get into it. I'm gonna pop this recipe up for me. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask away. I also have to do a quick little math here because I need to four times this bun recipe for us. Busy, busy. So much busy stuff. Yeah, yesterday I ended up after stream packaging up a bunch of mushrooms. Remember when Zach brought those over? So I packaged all of those up and then sous vide them or pasteurize them in the bag. And those will be used for a stroganoff. And then I also sous vide AM's duck yesterday for them. It's nonstop. Okay, one reason I like the King Arthur baking recipes is because everything is weighed out in grams. So really easy to scale as well as weighing out later. And hey, Relic, how are you today? Yeah, the bun bun recipe. <laughs> okay, 361 flour. One point four kg. Hundred and seventy two grams of potato flake. Hundred 
112 grams of milk powder, which will make your buns really, really soft is why that gets added. Oh, that's 100 grams of sugar. I usually go a bit less in the recipes and I don't find that anything happens to it. Eight grams of salt times four, 32. So we need eight teaspoons of yeast, which equals out to two tablespoons, two teaspoons, if you wanna do that way. Butter, you know that the bun is gonna be really, really soft when there's both butter and milk powder in the dough. Like half a pound of butter, yum. But we are making a lot of buns today. And then finally the water. Nine hundred grams. Okay, away we go. We'll get out all of the ingredients. Let's set up our mixer as well and get into it. But yeah, the today guys, not gonna be too stressful. Nothing too hard easy either. <laughs> Losing my words. Yeah, not too hard either for any of the processes. I think just once we get started, everything's gonna flow. So Ickel says, I worked at a hotel restaurant once. Everyone raved about the clam chowder on Fridays. Had a bowl because you love it. And it was yellow. Tasted like cream of chicken soup. You couldn't even identify what the squishy little meat bits were. Turns out chicken broth and canned clams. No fish flavor at all. Interesting. Well, I think everyone kind of makes their soup their own way, right? So, yeah, that's all there is to it. But yeah, this chowder that we're making today is not traditional at all, but it's one of my favorites. <laughs> Relic! Thank you, I'm honored. <laughs> no hot tub today? Dang it. Dang. Yeah, technically there is one visible. Yeah, the hot tub was working last night after stream. Sorry. I'm sorry. Road trip Sunday. Oh yeah. I don't have to cook on Sunday again. Sweet. Where are we eating, Sammy says? I don't know, you gotta find a spot. I thought we would maybe stop in Coombs or something. Is the Mexican place still there? Also, maybe we should talk to Officer, or we don't have time for all of the things. Uh, he's working that day oh, okay. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right, that's right. Okay guys, I'm grabbing the scale and as always, for any dough mixing process, we always start with our lukewarm liquid, so water in this case, and we mix it with the yeast to get the yeast woken up. It's woke. And then from there, we can keep adding all the rest of the dry ingredients, the butter, and then salt always gets added last. What's happening? Yeah, <laughs> Torino. It actually does, Orca. Just speaking from experience, human skin does crisp up like chicken skin. From the one time that I touched the right onto the oven element, it literally crisped up the skin on my knuckle. I was like, that kind of made me feel not good. It's like, oh, crispy skin. <laughs> the same thing happens. What? Done. 
Okay, so when we're doing our water, it should be around 95 degrees or 100 and no, 95, right? Not 100, 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Why am I second guessing? Because we're being crazy today. Chat's being cray. Yeah, I love ramen. Big ramen fan. <laughs> Hello, Carses. Yeah. Sometimes you might drop in at the weird moment in chat. <laughs> 908 grams of water. That's pushing the limit here on this cup. This is going to push the limit here today. I need a little towel. Oh, there's in the, it's in the bedroom if you can grab one, please. You just text her to get the name? Thank you. Thank you, officer. Thank you. Oh, that works too. You I meant like the white, oh. white blue stripe. Just the hand drying towel. The one. Okay, eight teaspoons of yeast. One, two, three, four, five. Seven, eight. You disturbed it. So there's been a crane fly in the house since yesterday. Sam, this is how, welcome to Sam. Says, it's okay crane fly, you can stay warm in the house overnight and I'll get you tomorrow morning when you're in an easier place to get. I'm like, oh, perfect. So when I go out in, to the bathroom in the middle of the night, I'm gonna get attacked. <laughs> now, he's chasing it around the house. You know like the biggest mosquitoes you've ever seen? Not, Those. That's what they look though. like, I know. And Haiyan, welcome, thanks for the follow. Rim of fire chowder. Okay, let's give this a little stir just to get the yeast incorporated. And it should dissolve into the water. Happy birthday, Ziva! What kind of doggy do you have, Mary? Also, doggy ice cream? That's adorable. Until it croaks and falls into the food bonk. No. Yeah, right. We need the... the bug assault gun. <laughs> Might get it for the food truck. Until you get the salt kernel in your eye or something. Are you Ouch. At each other? No. <laughs> oh, you bought the ice cream at the pet store, maple bacon? <laughs> Can't go wrong with that, right? Okay, I'm gonna start measuring out the flour. Grab our milk powder and potato flakes. And if you do bake a lot of King Arthur recipes, you will you will need both the potato flakes and the skim milk powder. Because they use it a lot in their recipes, but they also have some of the best bread recipes. Oh, you have two Siberian Huskies? Adorable. Something fall? No. Okay, we're good. Okay, so these are the potato flakes. Either potato flour, they said, or the potato flakes. So this is what we're using instead. <laughs> Nerf gun fights. 
Let's go back to our childhood orca. I did that a lot. Okay, flower, 1.4 kg. The yeast looks all happy in there. Oh, and I need just a touch of sugar still. So I'll do 700 gram measurings. Yeah, these were some of the best buns I've ever made this recipe. Is they're fluffy, but they still hold up to whatever you put inside of them. They don't just fall apart. <laughs> yeah, Torino. We didn't have Nerf guns. We just threw sticks and rocks at each other. That's why they say sticks and stones can break my bones. <laughs> so that's when you're from. Mm. <laughs> okay, Sammy's looking it up, officer. Thank you very, very much for that. Just enough flour in here, I think. Oh, you know it's good then. Done. That's lunch Sunday. We're going for ramen, chat. We're going for ramen. Bon appetit. Thank you. Okay, that's that. We can add a little bit more flour if we feel like it needs it. Next up, we'll do the milk powder and potato flakes. That's what the milk powder looks like. It's just a bit lumpy right now, so I'll break it up. Hello, Carbarab. Oh man, cap guns, Blanc? Oh, yeah. So good, so good. You literally, yeah. That seems like a lot of milk powder. 112 grams? Well, I guess we're not using milk, so fair enough. Yeah, the smell after? Exactly, Torino. I was going to ask if you guys were the obnoxious kids who put the like cards in the back of your bike tire and rode around. I did that. <laughs> so loud. Definitely did that. Watch out. Crew's rolling through. Bad bike crew. Yeah, you're one of those guys. Hit some sick jumps too while you're at it. Deadly. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what Bonk. And then when you just take the paper tape and a hammer and just roll through it, yeah, that's a bit obnoxious too. I, mean, I would never do that. <laughs> or a rock. Pack, pack, pack. What's wrong with us? <laughs> yep, did that. Okay, potato flake time, 172 grams. I will also say, so the potato flakes add good structure to the buns. From the starchiness. Okay, I'm gonna go with that first. This is, I think, just recalling from the last few times I made it, I felt like the dough was a bit dense. And I ended up adding a bit of water. Okay, flour, potato, milk, 100 grams of sugar. Yeah, Sammy's getting pumped for Sunday, looking at the menu. Uh, okay, I'm gonna do 85 grams of sugar or 10 grams less. Will the mixer hold it all? I think so, Orca. <laughs> I think so. Oh, we still need the butter softened too. Oh, baby. 
Okay, I'll measure out the salt in the dry container here. Thirty-two grams. We gotta fill it back up. When you sell a home, big rolls are bred before showings. It'll sell quick, Mary says. That's how she sold her last two homes. <laughs> I love it. Pro tips from Mary. Okay, we had 13 grams already. Just under 20 grams more. There we go. Fill this up while we're here. But the salt gets added last, so just need to measure out the butter now. More butter. 228 grams. Might be just the perfect amount here. Do not make onion soup if you want to sell the house. Actually, I think onion soup smells pretty dang good. Yeah, even make some blueberry muffins. Good one. Always a selling point. Food has power, guys. 243, we actually had some extra. Extra butter. How's this? There we go. Smallest little nubbin left. Yeah, don't cut the onions for the onion soup that day. Definitely. But if you're cooking it that day, that would be good. I could see that being all right. Okay, just putting Chef Mike to work and we'll pop this in, get it going, and then we'll sprinkle the salt and let this dough roll. I don't know about that, Orca. I don't know why there's more male chefs than female chefs. I would assume that it has something to do with how hard the job is. That's why Sammy actually did not, was not excited when I got hired at the restaurant. Because in past experiences, when a female is hired in a kitchen, usually they're not as strong, right? So then you, they're stuck asking for help all the time from the other people, which, well, pulls the other people away from their job. So Sam was like, oh, great. Another girl got hired. Now I have to do even more work. Yep. But little did he know. Little did I know. It, it was a Kate. Now I married her. And then what? Yeah, in your face, exactly, Torino. <laughs> <laughs> Come at me, bro. <laughs> yeah, good one, Torino. Women already know they're good cooks. Men are still trying to prove it. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> That's good. That's actually really That's good, good, I think. You kind of hit that one right on the head there. Sammy's got nothing even to say to it. <laughs> Hi, Dust. How are you doing? Welcome, welcome. You've not missed anything except me putting a lot of ingredients into here. Okay, away we go. Just help it out for the first little bit. Oh, yeah. Easy fit. We could have times it by six even. <laughs> okay, we'll sprinkle the salt now that we got this started. Oh. Okay, maybe not times six. Maybe that was a bit, talking a bit quick. Yeah, it always looks so dense when you first start mixing this. But just let it go and it will hydrate. 
It's just by some of the the powdered milk as well as the on or not the onion, the potato flakes. We're bunging it up. This? No, it's supposed to right now. It's supposed to move like that. The only way it's not moving is farther back the other way, obviously. What were you munching on? Ah! It's, it's in the kitchen! In the sink. Left. <laughs> He's got the buggy. You need help opening the door? He got it. Phew. We're okay. Oh, you've been lurking since the stardust? Well, thank you for the lurk, my dude. Just cleaning up this dough hook here a bit for us but so far so good I think we need still a bit more liquid as you can tell because if that is on low mixing so thick oh sweet barracuda did you have a chance to watch our YouTube videos on the bacon yet pork belly's coming in tomorrow you're gonna love it Everyone that we've given the bacon to says they can't eat anything else now. Okay, just a little bit. You can see how thick this is, right? Let's just do this. Potatoes. Thick, thick potatoes. Pork belly like this? Yeah. Yeah, because bacon, you want it without the skin still. That's what we're doing for tomorrow as well. No skin on the bacon. Hey, Sketchy, good to see you. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, what were you munching on? I don't know. I don't know what he was munching on, guys. You're asking? Got distracted by the bug. Hanuta? A morning Hanuta? I didn't know that was part of a balanced breakfast. He did. I mean, he already did threaten to make more cookies this morning before stream. And I was like, no. Mm-mm. Yeah, pretty, well, close but different, Orca. It's like a nice, dark, kind of hard chocolate with hazelnut pieces in it, in the wafers. Okay, this is looking better, guys. I still think I just need a little bit more. Probably will do it. And now we have to mix this massive dough until it's nice and smooth looking. Around noon. Here, you can take this if you want. I don't think she's messaged back yet. So this is yeah. the that's coming. This is the guy that will come if she doesn't come. Okay. Yeah, crispy, chocolatey, hazelnutty. Trina was gonna buy some pork hogs today, but had to pay her driver's license. Aw, no head cheese this weekend. Dang it. Come on now. On the stock, so just keep kind of adding to it as it goes down. Maybe a little bit more water still. This is crazy, guys. This is crazy. Mary, thank you very much. Subscribing to our channel at tier one. Welcome to the kitchen crew. It's great to have you. 
And yeah, keep asking away those questions. Don't be sorry about it. They're not silly. We're here to teach you the whole way. So welcome in. Is the dough sticky? Can you tell, Torino? <laughs> it is quite sticky. But like not really stick to your hand sticky. It's like a potato sticky, which you would definitely know. I know this. Okay, that should be good. Okay, I'm gonna put away a couple things it's while we have a moment. And hi, Vian! So yeah, I think that helped. Just kind of working in that last little bit of the liquid and then this should be good to go. It'll definitely take a good seven minutes or so. Yeah, right? Imagine doing this by hand in a silver bowl, just like Baba, which is uh, a grandma in Ukrainian. Just like Baba did. Gotta fill up the flower bin again. F yeah, bro. What? Look at this masterpiece. Holy! Tomahawk. Viewn. Yeah, look at that. Ah. Oh, look at I that. I want that meat in my mouth. Like, Looks so good. Yeah. Hell yeah. And Barracuda, yeah, I'm back. Good to have you back, and thank you very much for the two months being part of the kitchen crew. <laughs> Viewn is glowing. I mean, you looked really happy just holding the raw meat. I can't imagine how you look now after eating it. <laughs> Good job, Vyun. That looks, that looks really Okay, I'm gonna turn this speed up just a touch now. I love the way this is mixing. Like, what's going on here? We gotta play with it, Sammy says. Now it's going. I just don't want to add too much liquid. Like, let me see what's... Let's see if there's any comments that can help us. Oh! For an aromatic, crunchy seed topping, brush the buns with egg wash before you bake and put some everything bagel seasoning on top. Dead. No Sounds way. delish. Sounds delish. Someone says, this is the only bun recipe you'll need. Favorite bun recipe on King Arthur. Come out tender, fluffy with a soft, a cloud soft crust. Cool. Still need more water. What do you guys think? I'm, I'm happy that I didn't add all of the potato flakes. So like these recipes that I keep using, I'm going to end up making my own notes in them, right? From all these different times that maybe we add a bit of water or sometimes it needs more flour. And that way it's just like perfect, right? We don't want to be fooling around with this stuff. It's nice to just put everything in, let it mix, and you can do something else while it's mixing away. Hello, Night Wanderer. Welcome. Imagine a recipe asking for a pound of butter and you mistakenly use can of butter. Yeah, and Vian says death will occur. <laughs> yeah, that is looking better. We just needed to loosen it up a little bit more, I think. Have some water while we're here. Sounds like a party to bunk. Yeah, a very quiet party. <laughs> okay, I think that was perfect. Now I'm starting to see the stretch of the gluten, which is what we want.
should be good after that. Just a sprinkle of parsley, yeah, no one would know. Go, go, go. All right, now I don't think I gotta fool around with that anymore. So flipping this over, bundle, cross that off. And then next up, we're gonna get into the cookies. <laughs> you guys, wait, did I miss a, miss a Kiwi Mish? Where's the Mish comment? Oh, Orca. Okay, so this is our chowder pot. That goes here. Clean up some of this. We'll definitely need our silpat as well as this sheet pan for our cookies coming up next. So I might as well just pop that in there. Getting it ready. Oh, in Discord. Thanks. <laughs> I felt left out. I was like, I don't know what you guys are talking about. <laughs> I got nothing. Hey, did anyone stick around in Delhi stream yesterday? Because that ended up being a lot of fun. If you didn't, I'll let you know it what ended up happening. So he was tasting the chicken wings that his wife made with a bunch of hot sauces. And then he ended up bringing his two little boys in and letting them taste the hot sauce, kind of like guiding them through it, giving them disclaimers. Like if it's hot, then he can't help them, right? They can only have milk, that's it. It was so cute, Dust. So like coming from someone, I've never thought of myself to ever be like a parent nor do I ever plan on being a parent. So it was so heartwarming and like genuine to see that people are still being raised right at the end of the day. So I said to Sam, I'm like, Sam, see, like there's no way that I would take the time if I was a parent to do that stuff with the kids. So it's like, I know that I should not bring someone into the world. Children smell anyhow. Yeah, and they eat all your food. Exactly, Torino. But it was just so awesome to see, like them just being like, yes, sir, no, sir. Very, very polite. And him just saying like how he wants his kids to be responsible for their feelings and stuff that they do and say at such a young age, like four years old, wow. These kids are gonna be legends. Exactly. I got lots of lots of big kids to take care of Torino, which I enjoy. This is getting there. See how the gluten strands are starting to stretch open? It's looking a lot better now that we loosen it up just a touch. Yeah, it was a good call. It seems like every single recipe for bread dough is I always have to add extra moisture. So it must just be because of our location in the world and how our environment is. But yeah, it did not look right when we first started. And that's how you have to use all of the senses when you're cooking. As always, a recipe is just a guideline. Turn it up just a bit more. You ever open up your own restaurant, kids menu, or just kids size portions? I'm never opening a restaurant, Orca. It's like when I'm older, Sam and I, we're gonna have, well, our, our plan is to have property, small house on it, lots of doggos, and a farm that we just live off the land. Yeah, restaurant is never, was never in my sights. Even when I like first started culinary school, I never even wanted to like become a head chef anywhere. It was always the food truck route. 
which is crazy to think that it actually has followed through. And then the other thing that we're thinking for the truck is we are still kind of thinking of getting one deep fryer in there. And then we can also convert to biofuel, right? Or biodiesel. And that way we can always have fries, which everyone loves French fries, especially when they're super good, right? So kids love them. They're good for vegetarians or vegans, right? So gives you lots of options having French fry. Looks like the mixer is more of a spinner. Yeah, the bowl spins, Frank. People following the corporate dream is a trap, yeah. Cooking great food in a calm pub has to be more rewarding. Well, don't get me wrong, like not every single restaurant experience has been terrible, right? There's been some really amazing ones. They all evolve, you're saying? Yeah, yeah, at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. At the end of the day, yeah, it's just really hard work being a cook. You don't love fries. Yeah, Jiggles, I'm totally lying. Fries are life. <laughs> Deep fried mushrooms, Torino says. Does the dough heat up? I would say so. Fries are food, not friends. Yeah, there's vegetarians in Alberta. <laughs> I mean, I guess we're about to find out. This is almost there, guys. See how I can poke it and it's not sticking to my finger at all? Just need to work the gluten a touch more. And I think it is better at a lower speed for that, which is interesting as well. It's sticky, but not, which it's nice to work with. Mm-hmm, Torino. So that was like the last restaurant I worked in here. And they just posted this morning that they're looking for another chef to join. So that means that somebody left, probably the person that took my spot, because there's only three people in that crew. But they're literally for us because of the small space is they can only do patio service or take out, right? And I will say, even with that restaurant being small, it was not any different than any other bigger restaurant that I've been in. It was just as stressful, if not more, if not more. And hi, Hippie, how are you? Got the stream on the company while you drive to your parents. Thank you very much for that. I love that. Happy to keep you company. And hello kitchens open. Yeah, happy Friday to you. Thank you to Reno for posting our link for this amazing mixer and welcome Butter Idea. Yeah, it's called an Incarcerum. They're made in Sweden. We've been using this one since I think 2017 we got it either 2016 or 2017 and it's like old faithful nothing will wreck this thing as an engineer you would not be happy with the dough kneader how come you say that frank it's always done such a good job mixing up any bread dough so that's why i want to ask just from the engineer standpoint what you think is wrong with it you can't get the incarcerum in europe orca that's crazy I wonder why. Yeah, we're almost there, guys. Just testing out the gluten structure there. You've seen more movement in other mixers. Okay, that's fair. That is fair. And yeah, whenever we mix a dough, especially when they're different, is they all kind of move different, I would say. <laughs> yeah, Torino. I'm still suspicious of it too. It's okay. <laughs> Just getting our plastic wrap over. We'll wrap this up nice and tight. Just 
gonna do a scrape here and then I think I'm gonna turn it off. Yeah, it's crazy to think that we'll get like 20 buns out of this, hey? But that's why you gotta take the time to let your dough rise. Not just once, but twice before you bake it. going. The yeast needs to be happy as well. Yes. Yeah, exactly, Bonk. Mmm. The poppy seed buns. Oh, thanks for posting that, Sam. Yeah, there is a dough hook and there's also a dough roller. Okay. Yeah, so that dough roller, like the Incarcerum was first manufactured in the 1940s, if that also says anything about the machine, right? It's been around for a while. <laughs> yeah, the link right there is from a Dutch shop. It's true, Orca. <laughs> Reminds you of the fun? You had last Tuesday watching your laundry spin in the washer. Yeah, don't watch too closely, right? Okay, so I'm just doing this last scrape. Turn down the, the speed and then we'll ball this up. I'm happy with that. I'll feel the dough. If I have to knead it by hand a little bit, I can also do that. Sounds good, Vion. Yeah, no worries. You go have a chill chill night with the waifu. You deserve it. You just made like such a great dinner for yourself. Sounds good, Vune. Yeah. Take care. Vune's in a meat coma now. I was gonna say, before you go, Vion, I just have to ask, did you eat the whole steak? <laughs> did you eat that whole piece? Yeah, what a meatitarian. I love it. He's got his iron for a good week or so now. <laughs> I expect also nothing less. Scrape, 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 all the goodness. Yeah, no regrets. Totally, yeah. Eat it like a lollipop. <laughs> we made you more of a meat eater. I don't know whether to say sorry or you're welcome. Yeah, remember when I used to eat beef like only once every couple of months? Do you notice a difference of how you feel? I'm just gonna wipe this mixer a bit. We got it dusty. Yeah, how could you not with all the deliciousness?
their cravings for red meat more, but instead of buying something cheap, yeah, you treat yourself from time to time. Higher quality, definitely better for you. Yeah, sounds good, Vune. I love that. And thanks for sharing that. Love to know that stuff. Okay, I wonder if I can pick up this dough ball and knead it. I don't think so. I think we'll be fine, though. Can always build up a little bit more structure in the buns later after, after we divide them up when we're rolling. So I'm just going to leave that like that. It's going to fill out the bowl anyway. So now we just wrap it up nice and tight with plastic so it doesn't get a dry crust on top while it finishes rising. And this should take about an hour. I'm just going to place it by the stove where it is definitely warm. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. Okay, another quick sip of water. Yummy, Orca. What kind of sausage? Okay, it's cookie time. Why don't I set this one hour timer just for the dough? You know, forget about it. And then going to the cookie recipe from yesterday. Plain pork bratwurst style, yum. Yum, yum. Yeah, that's exactly it, Dust. That's what they're going to look like. So recipe from Bon Appetit, salted butter, chocolate chunk, shortbread. So we're going to whip up an egg. And then we roll the logs in the egg and then we roll it in dark brown sugar or demerara sugar. And then you cut your cookies. Would you say you did about half inch thick rounds, Sam? Um, probably close to that, yeah. Okay, so half inch thick rounds, they say to slice each log. And then we want to make sure that the cookies are one inch apart as well. Sprinkle with sea salt. That's pretty thick. And yeah, we just sprinkle with sea salt and then they bake at, we did 360 Fahrenheit, just a little bit higher because the cookie, the way we divide it is bigger. So you have to account for that. And it did take almost 20 minutes. I did them about three eighths. Three eighths so of an inch. inch. Okay. That's pretty big. That will probably work out a lot better than what I did. It yesterday. won't spread out as much probably. No. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. And then with the, the sugar and the egg, it'll hold it tight. Yeah, yeah. The one thing we noticed is the edges of the cookies yesterday when we baked them is it kind of got a little bit lacy or crisp and spread out where I'm thinking that the egg wash sugar little dealio on the outside holds it together more. Put your doughs in the oven with only the lamp on. Yes, yeah, the oven light works really good for proofing if it's not warm in your house. Yeah, out of the way, no wind drag. Yeah, you want to save this one, Hippie. We tried out the cookies last night just to make sure that they were going to work and everything was good. So, so, so good. You need two orders of cookies? Good thing we got extra. You're lucky, Mom. Those last minute orders. <laughs> okay, so we need minimum 12 then. Hello, by this girl. Yes, you are new. Welcome in. I hope you're having a great day. Let us know if you have any questions about what goes on here. <laughs> Sketchy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's do our egg wash. I'm using coconut sugar for this today. Instead of the demerara. So we just need something kind of dark and crunchy. Oh yeah, this was one of the sick cookie renditions we thought of last night. Is you take the dough base recipe, instead of just doing dark chocolate, we do the pistachio Lindor chocolate chopped up in it. 
And then instead of rolling it in sugar on the outside, you roll it in crust pistachios. <laughs> died. We died last night. We were in just cookie heaven, honestly. Okay, we'll just whip this up in a container and then maybe I'll just pour it out into a Lloyd pan, I think will work the best. And I think one egg should do it for us here. You put bread in your laundry room to prove, yes. Yeah, nine months of the year, it's plenty warm in there. That's a good one too. Yeah, if you died last night, who's here then, Orca says. Yeah, the ghost of Kate still around. Yeah, we're trying out the newest rendition of the Kate clone today on stream. Just gonna use a fork to whip that up and we want it really mixed with the yolk and the white. No stringiness allowed. Because the duck egg's really thick, we might have to add two. Yeah, the, it's just a hologram. <laughs> that looks good. recipe for the Subway chocolate chip cookies. It was heaven. Yeah, those are pretty good too. Just want to make sure that this pan can fit the cookie dough log. So I'll just go grab those. And then I suppose we should also turn on the Traeger because it should be good. This should be pretty quick. It doesn't take long to cut them, right? Okay, so that'll fit if I do that one sideways. So this one will definitely fit. So that's good. Sweet. So we'll unwrap both of these then. All the plastic's gone. And then I'm gonna use the same style of pan. So let's get another one to pour the sugar in, I think, to coat it. Nice one, Orca, you're getting there. That's for sure. Halloween should be a week long. I seriously, it's one of my favorite holidays, right? But it's never a holiday. Yeah, me too, Dust. Subway white chocolate macadamia. Especially when you ask them, I don't know if you've ever done this, but to pop them in the oven real quick to get them warm. So good. Okay, so I just poured a bit of the coconut sugar into the pan here just to start. Kind of even it out like that, get any lumps out. Now that's ready for us because this is going to be a little bit messy, I think. Yeah, heat it up. Nom. And then we just need, I guess, once the dough is coated, we'll be cutting it on a cutting board, not the wooden one. So that's ready to go. All right. So yeah, this is what it looked like when Sam cut into it yesterday. <laughs> not allowed. That's Sam vacuuming out the Traeger. He's just cleaning out some of the ash from underneath before we start it up again. So this is how easy it should be to unwrap the cookie dough from yesterday.
There we go. Beauty. I seriously want to just like sell cookie logs like this. I'm like, Sam, we're going to be the new go-to people for like Pillsbury style cookies. What kind of pellets? Mm, it might have just been hickory, I think. Pop that there. Now we roll this. Just this outside edge. And we can get the sugar to stick. <laughs> if you have that, we'll just kind of add some egg wash into there, I suppose. Okay, I think that looks good. So I'll just pick it up like this. Give it a little shake off. Remember, the heat from our hands is going to make this melt, so we don't want to be fooling around too much with it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll just sprinkle the sugar over top, yeah. I think. Sammy, help! It's not really rolling in the sugar, so we're going to go for a sprinkle. Come on, just pop it up there to show them. Sharing is caring. You would buy cookie logs like this? Roll it here. Oh, it says roll it. It's really hard. Should be good. Bye, this girl. Thanks for the follow. But yeah, I don't know how much we could charge for this. Shortbread's pretty expensive to make. Butter. Because it's just like butter, flour, and sugar. But still, it's like a billion times better than anything that would come out of a Pillsbury package. It's giving you cavities. Dust, please. So this, I'll just transfer over here for us. The cutting station. And the rest of this, I'm honestly just gonna get messy since my hands already are. Your hands are like built-in kitchen utensils, so don't be weird about using them. Okay. I think I'll just hold it like this so I can swivel. Just leave that one there. So you probably can only cut one at a time. That's gone. Do a quick rinse in my hand. <laughs> More sugar. It does look pretty naughty, doesn't it? I mean, Sam didn't take this stuff yesterday, but I can see this getting pretty messy right now. I think we for sure have to prep two more pans with parchment at least. Because once I start cutting, I'm just going to cut it all, right? So I'm not going to go back to it later and restart this. He's just sprinkling our organic coconut sugar instead of the Demerara brown sugar. Okay, so this is what it looks like on the board to cut from. Did you just use a chef's knife yesterday? Uh, no, I used your scimitar. Ah, oh, Sammy used the scimitar, sweet. Okay. So one more pan here with our silicone mat. 
So we're all prepped up. We'll do two pans like that and then two others with just parchment. Firmly frozen, the meat slicer could handle the slices. Maybe. I would be worried about it crumbling though. Would be a little bit worried about it crumbling. Because this slicer doesn't give a heck. It just powers through everything, right? It can't discern meat from cookie dough. <laughs> Yeah, just bake the log of cookie dough, Torino. I wonder what would happen. Okay, we're prepped. Prepped, prepped. Tammy says scimitar, so that's what we will do. The biggest knife ever. Have to be a sadist and add chopped pecans to the dough. That's not being a sadist. I love it. Yeah, that's all we did when we first started eating the cookies yesterday. We we're like, we could do this. We could do this. Yeah, if you add nuts, it's actually healthier. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to move this now that it's on here. So half inch thick. Just like that. Oh, it doesn't want to cut very nice. Maybe it's a bit too soft. Or too hard. How was it when you cut it? Because it's sliding out. It's like the chocolate's really hard or something. Yeah, you just have to, you have to go for it. Is it too cold? No, you should put them back together. It's just how... Okay. Okay, so this is a team effort then, I would say. Okay. I didn't deal with these yesterday, guys. So Sammy knows a lot better how <laughs> this dough is when you first cut it. But he says if you put it back together, it'll just bake back together. So that's fine. Do your best and forget the rest. Sure. That's the first start. Okay, you can go take a break for a bit. While I tray these, <laughs> looks so good. And then the other thing, cause we got big cookies, we're not crowding the tray, right? Which is important cause then it will splute out. So three, six, I just did eight per tray. Let's pop that back on the top. But yeah, I think it's pretty cool idea if you we just sold like cookie dough logs like this that people just take home and cut cut themselves. Definitely don't waste that. I don't even think I can stack this. Fishing liner wire. Line yeah, the fishing line wouldn't. We'd have to get like a cheese wire for sure. Valia boy. That's a good tip though. So thanks for sharing that. A lot of people wouldn't think of that, right? Warm knife with hot water. Yeah, that's the other option. But Sam's just 
he's just better at some things than I am. <laughs> Raffle Iron, hello. Yeah, Pacific Rim Seafood Chatter. Check out the recipe we got linked today. It's really yummy. It's like a spiced coconut and chipotle broth. Yeah, you just power through it. I know. It's the greatest. I think I'll need more sheet pans. <laughs> and that's okay, because we do have more sheet pans. Just kind of talking out loud to myself. Look how good it looks though. And hi, Kame. Yeah, what is this? The most delicious cookies ever, pretty sure. <laughs> he thought Sam was putting soap in the cookies. Torino's like, no. Just screaming at the monitor. Sam, no. Hi, Svavita. How are you? Okay, just one more pan is all I need to prep for the remnants there for us. Is it really a chowder though? Hey, it's not my recipe. But I will say, it is one of my favorites. It's so, so good. And a nice switch up that most people would not expect. One more sheet of parchment. Thank you. How's you do barbecue? Oh, sorry, that's Tyree Chef. Tyree Chef got a new barbecue. Yeah. It does sound delicious, Raffle Iron. Okay, phew. So many chefs. Lots of chefs. Sneak some toasted coconut. Ooh. That could add some interesting texture for sure. Yeah, so the recipe is from a restaurant downtown here in Victoria called Redfish Bluefish. Really good fish and chips, but then they also make this chowder. Well, instead of us paying them to make it, we just make it for ourselves. Is this just going on? Yeah. Is it possible to trim that at all? No. Okay. I'll watch it. Okay, Sammy's the cookie baker, so he says he'll watch it. Maybe we'll flip it this yeah. way. Okay. And yeah, the restaurant where this chowder recipe comes from they have always operated out of two sea cans for recycled shipping containers so super sustainable they're only open in the summertime here and then the winter time they take off and enjoy their life which i love to see Orange zest? Yeah, that would be good. I am not. I don't know what's wrong with me, but I'm not a huge chocolate orange person. Never have been, even when I was young. I don't know. Palette's not even changed. There's a bunch of bees in the lupins, and because it's so smoky from the Traeger, apparently, the, the bees are just like, oh. Yeah, the Traeger. <laughs> the smoke from the Traeger is making the bees... Very docile outside, Sam is saying. Remember all of our lupin flowers that you guys were asking about? They're all popping right now. Waiting for the chowder pros to come in, right, Torino? That ain't no chowder, Frenchie. Sam was in the kitchen. The towels are dirty now. <laughs> Sam was here. 
Okay, there's just a little bit of sugar all over here where we sprinkle in. So I'm just cleaning that up. And then these other trays that didn't go into the Traeger yet, we're just gonna pop into the fridge so they stay nice and chilled. Yum, I love pumpkin seeds, raffle iron. Pepitas on a pozole would be awesome, I think. Chocolate mint? I'm okay with that one. Sam doesn't like that one though. <laughs> nope. <laughs> What's wrong with us? Yeah, your wife loves orange and chocolate cami and you don't understand it. So it's not just me. Yeah, Terry's chocolate oranges. I'll eat them, but it's not my favorite. It's like, I don't hate it, but yeah, it's not my go-to either. Okay, so cookies. Where did my pen go to here? Somehow it got jacked. There it is. I didn't touch it. So we have egg washed, rolled in the sugar and sliced. And now they're going to bake at 360 degrees Fahrenheit, just because of the size for about 18 minutes with a rotate after the first 10. Are you starting with two or three trays? Four. You're doing all four? Yes. Okay. How long does the tray you have? Think these are okay to sit out? No, you should probably. Okay, that's what I was gonna do. <laughs> Maya, chocolate needs no help. It's good as is. It's true. It's true. Yeah, that should stack pretty good. There, one on the pork belly, huh? What's that? I was. What? I'm not scared. Okay, we'll put away our cookie ingredients as well. So we have a nice, clean, and organized work area. And now it's chowder time. Holy! I don't know if you guys can see the bread dough bowl but this is what's going on here beside the stove top we're making a drum that's how you know it's growing i'm just gonna move it a little bit farther away from the pot over there but she is rising up the thing's like half full already yeah it is bulging orca i don't mind yeah that's the extent of my licorice is tiger tail ice cream maybe once a year <laughs> Yeah, exactly, Maya. I enjoy mint, just not with chocolate. And the same with orange. But you've had a lint chocolate that tasted as if it had cherry in it and you liked it. Oh, that would be good. Cammy's got lots of cooking to do tomorrow, prepping some tenderloin and crab for your brother's birthday dinner. Uh, yeah, I'll be right over. Gotta prep some sandos for afternoon tea for the wife and friends for Sunday. I'm coming over. I like whatever you got going on over there. And hi, DJ Beats. Thanks for popping in. Happy Friday to you. Chocolate bar with popcorn in it? That would be good. Yeah, how fancy. I know, I love it. A really dark chocolate? I do love chocolate cherry. Like, Black Forest Cake is one of my faves. Mmm, and strawberry cheesecake? Torino, that sounds great. Okay, what do we got? So that dough is halfway there. So we have another 30 minutes on the timer until we can divide it up, portion it up. So we definitely want the cookies to be done baking. Otherwise we don't have enough sheet pans to put the buns on. Let's just say that. Do I have one extra in here? Oh, I got one extra in here. So we can definitely start with a little bit of the batch then. Cool. No shortage of sheet pans in this kitchen anymore. And I'm happy about that. Otherwise, it might be a bit of a stressful day today. So that's all prepped for the bunners. Yep, thanks, Sammy. Yeah, Cherry Garcia, because it needs like the chocolate chunk, for sure. Mm-hmm. Okay, looking at our chowder recipe, friends.
So they say, this Pacific Rim chowder is simply the best soup we've ever had from a truck or a shipping container. Locals consider this sophisticated twist on good old clam chowder ambrosia from the sea. I guess that's a good way to put it. <laughs> so there is corn kernels. We'll also put some peas in there. And those are both from the freezer. So I guess we can just measure those out now as we go over everything. Might as well let them start to thaw. It adds really nice color to the chowder as well. So for the 10 liters, I think I'll do a liter each of those. Should be good. You love seafood chowder? Me too. And I've had like all different variations. What is there? There's New England, Boston, and Manhattan, which were taught in culinary school, which are all good. And then when we came up to the island, we discovered this one with like coconut milk and chipotle in it. And it is so heckin' good. I'm replacing the canned corn. You could easily do fresh. I'm doing frozen today. Either or. The New England one is your fave, Torino. It is really good. Like when it's done right, it's banging. I just don't like when the New England ones are too, too thick, where it like is really sticky and weird texture. It's like, how much roux did you put into here? <laughs> yeah, sometimes we can say that, right? Especially when corn is not in season. The frozen's gonna be better than fresh. For sure. Because all of the frozen veggies and fruits are picked in their prime. Perfect ripeness. Yeah, so Green Fang, that's why it's called the Pacific Rim Chowder. Kind of grabbing some influence from the Asias and the Pacific. All good things. You like it that way, Torino, when the chowder is almost like too thick to eat with a spoon? You crazy, man. You crazy, crazy. Yeah, only homemade ones. Me too, Maya. Bonk, you need me to have to try a local chowder? You think I'll like it? I'm sure I would. If you think that I'll like it, I'm sure I'll like it. That's a good thing we got so many extra liter containers because we'll need them for everyone today. The Splash Cafe, sweet. Kame, believe it or not, got some super awesome corn in Hawaii. Though it's at a premium, so it sells out when available. That's like the corn here on the island too. There's like one really, really good farm that everyone knows. Thanks for the follows, friends, and welcome. Gavino64, we got white Ferrari. We got a white Ferrari? Oh, fancy. Welcome. Yeah, that's the good thing, exactly. We all got different tastes to offer to each other. So cool. Okay, so those are some of our veggies going into the chowder today. And we'll just pop those back here and they can start to thaw. It'll take, I'm sure, over an hour for that. Oh, yum bong. Get the chowder in a regular bowl or a toasted buttered sourdough bowl. Insane. You guys are making me too hungry right now. Okay, so that's done. And then we're going to need onion, carrot, celery. So some mirepoix. And I'll also grab some garlic. So I'll go over to the other fridge now and grab that. Celery, carrot, big onion, one head of garlic. That should do it. Is 
that'll do. Whoa, that's cool, Bonk. The chowder is so popular there, you can buy it at Costco's? Also, that company is brilliant for doing that, or the restaurant. Frickin' picked up by Costco. Winning. Oh, I just saw our two extra mangoes. That's dessert today for sure. I think I'll make, because Sam's never had a mango lassie before. Mango yogurt smoothie coming on up. Seafood is your favorite? Awesome. Well, you've definitely come to the right place today. Let's get some celery stalks off. We are using two types of salmon in the chowder today. Some nice large prawns and then a couple cans of clams as well. Oh, that's actually not, now that I flipped that over, that's not the nicest piece of celery. I think I'll put that back into nature. This one should be better. There we go. So three big stalks of celery. I think that'll be great. Yeah. Yeah, I'm on a seafood diet, Frank says. Yeah, that's the best type. <laughs> Lassie it is. I actually don't have a go-to recipe. I've never made one before, Sketchy. Like I said, Sam's never experienced it. But I really hope that Anisopteryx comes in today because he is like a mango Lassie fiend. And I'm sure he has a good recipe for us. It is Friday, but I'm sure he's just finishing up at the school. Okay, so let's, well, let's not take care of our veggies just yet. Why don't we keep going through the recipe and just gathering all the stuff that we need? Cause we'll also need some potatoes to go into there. So Sammy got some Yukon Golds for us. They're nice and small too. Those would make deadly potato wedges. Two, four, six potatoes. We'll do eight of these little guys. So there's those. And I'll leave the skin on them as much as we can, just because it's nice and thin. It's got good flavor and nutrients. Oh, nice one, Mob. We're making some interweb friends right now. Okay, we got the garlic and then we need coriander and cumin spices. So ground cumin. We've got to grind up some fresh coriander today. Fill that back up. So I'll just pop that there. Cumin can go back by the soup station. And I think right now I'm gonna take a quick bathroom break. I just felt the little <laughs> coffee tinge. So hold tight guys, I'll be right back. Thank you. 
Okay, I'm back guys. And Sammy said we're good to put the cookies on the Traeger now. So that's what we're gonna quickly do. One, two trays. Bottom? Yep. Is it gonna go? Yep. Okay. It'll be okay like that? I've never baked cookies like that. <laughs> oh, okay. The trays are kinda just one tray is stacked on the other one. I don't know if it's gonna splute if we do it like that. I guess we'll find out. We're good, guys. We're good. Hello, Mickey. How's it going? Just got back, taking the new car for a spin. So you had fun then, is what you're saying. <laughs> Pop that baby open. Whew. You gotta take us to Jocko's or the Hitching Post when they come. I'm in. Yeah, you had fun, Mickey, and it's pretty fast. Yeah, you always gotta test it out. What can this thing really do, right? <laughs> I like it. Yeah, time for some stealth work, Maya. Okay, back to this recipe. So we finished getting out the coriander and the ground cumin. Obviously we'll need salt and pepper. I'm gonna use two cans of diced tomatoes going in. Cause I like the little chunkers. Oh, sorry, it is whole. It is whole tomato. So we'll have to break it up with our hands then before we put them in. Just do that in a bowl. So two cans of tomatoes. Nice one, Mickey. A BMW M3. Congratulations. That's a nice little car. And yeah, this that's pretty fast. <laughs> He's pretty happy with it, chat. Well done. Okay, our coconut milk. Thinking we'll do... Six cans? They do three cans of coconut milk to make how much? Eight servings. We're doing minimum 10 servings. So, okay, I'll do five cans of coconut milk then. So we'll get those all opened up. And then one can of chipotle peppers in adobo. It's a 2017, yeah, nice one. So this is what I'm using for a coconut milk. We don't wanna go with any low grade coconut milks cause they taste really weird. And we'll just make the rest of your whole dish taste weird. And then here's our chipotles. That's what we're looking for. And all this is, so chipotle pepper is a smoked jalapeno and then it's mixed. The adobo sauce is tomato, onion, vinegar, sugar, salt, paprika, and garlic is the only flavors in there. So like all natural stuff. We just pour that in. So there's our canned stuff. Yeah, premium only around here, it's true. That's why we got Ferraris and BMWs. <laughs> we need a little bit of sweet chili sauce going into it, as well as hot sauce if you want. So you can really spice this up as much or as little as you want. So make it to fit your palate, right? A little bit of Worcestershire sauce to season it through. So we'll grab that. And then for garnish, 
We cut up some cilantro and green onions, or I'm gonna use chives today. And then we still just have to cut up all the fish while we're making the broth. Sweet. That's it. Oh, did you set a timer for the cookies, Sam? Okay, phew. Whew. I was like, I didn't set a cookie timer and we can't forget about that. Yeah, that's that's perfect, Orca. A small blue little Fiat Cinquecento. I think that's how you say it, right? Or Cinquecento. And a huge Audi V8. Love it. Yeah, I love to... You have to love a canned good that you can read, pronounce, and understand all of the ingredients in it. <laughs> I will show you the cumin seeds, Frank. Since sometimes you say it gets confused. So this is what our cumin seed looks like. Here, I'll take a little bit out and put it in my palm. So that's what it looks like. And then it smells. Cumin has a very distinct smell. Just always reminds me of like an old El Paso taco seasoning smell. <laughs> Which I'm sure they don't have in Europe, so I'm sorry for that reference. Oh, that's the worst, Vion. I'm so sad for you. Okay, let's trim up our celery. So tip and top for sure. And then I always wash it up because celery is dirty. The carrots will peel. And I don't think I'm going to use all of this. Oh, no. Um, that's TOS right now. <laughs> Goodness gracious, it must be Friday. <laughs> hey Zing, welcome. <laughs> that one threw me off a bit there, guys. Did not expect that. Jeez, aggressive carrots. Hello, Raven Spurn. Welcome. Yeah, we're working on the chowder right now. So cookies are in the oven baking. Bundo is currently proofing up. So we're working on the soup now. Just chop the middle. <laughs> Savage Orca. Easy for you to say. <laughs> okay, I'm going to peel up the carrots. So that's our next route here. And all of the veggies are going to be a nice small dice. So whenever we make a soup, we got to think, well, someone's going to eat this with a spoon. So can't have anything too large there. And then when we're eating soups, we want like a little bit of everything in each bite, right? Yeah, the carrots were blushing. <laughs> Maya. Never had chowder before, so you Googled a recipe. You're really interested in making one? I think you would like it, Vyun. You have to like seafood. Because, like, typically it's made with clams, right? But this one today we're doing salmon, shrimp, and clams. One of my favorite trios for chowder. You can also add any white fish. So cod is really good. Obviously halibut is good. You also call cumin caraway? No, that's another different seed. But they look really similar, Frank. Let me grab the... Yeah, they literally almost look the exact same. So this is caraway. It almost looks the exact same, but total different smell. Caraway seed is more licorice-y, I would say. Scarlet, you personally love chunky soups? Yeah, that's okay. Just because I'm serving it to other people, right? So I can't just make what I like to eat. I have to think about 
the entire percentage of people and cater to that. But to each their own, that's totally it. Is you take that recipe and you make it however you want to eat it. Okay, now we'll tip and top these as well. Did Sammy do the cookies again? So we mixed up the dough silent one yesterday, last thing on stream, just so that it had enough time to chill overnight. And we did do a little test batch last night and it worked really good. And they are baking outside currently in the Traeger. In our sneaky little convection oven, which so far has not failed us yet. Okay, that's our carrots ready to go. <laughs> Mickey, can I have some cookies, Sammy? <laughs> we do have some extra. Yeah, Scarlet. Cumin and caraway look like fennel and rosemary seed as well. So weird. Is stew its own thing, Scarlet, or is it technically a soup? I think it's its own thing, right? What's a good substitute for cord? Oh, corn. <laughs> I was like, what? I don't even know what that is. Uh, I would honestly either just eliminate it or we have to think about veggies that are going to combine well with the seafood, right? So this might be pushing it a bit, but possible bell pepper. Just thinking about the sweetness and the crunch, right, is what we're going for. I know I was eyeing up the bell peppers in the fridge. I was like, maybe this would be good, but... Don't want to make it too confusing. There's already a lot in this chowder specifically. Yeah, fennel seeds are licorice-y. Okay, there's all our garlic. I think I'm going to leave some of these bigger cloves out. That should do it. So let's smash this all up and then we'll just use the garlic press to mince it in later. Sammy's just doing a swivel on the cookies right now outside, guys. I'll ask him how they look when he comes in. Peel it all up. Can't get in. Send help. There we go. So sticky. You know it's fresh garlic when. Guess I shouldn't complain. Hey, head wounds. Thank you very much for the two months in a row. Welcome back. Thanks for the prime gaming sub as well. I know you only got one per month. Pardon? Okay. Things are not okay. Should I go a bit higher? Sammy says, turn on the oven. Is there anything I need to help you with? Okay. Smells a little bit burnt sugary. Something's going on with the cookies, guys. <laughs> He's playing it cool. I was gonna say, I smell like burnt sugar. Seriously? Is that going to be the demise? The one thing that we didn't do yesterday and now it wrecked them all? Thanks for believing, Vune. I mean, we we're only following the recipe. <laughs> Silent one, we had fennel once in like a good food box and you'll never eat it again. Fennel is quite a strong flavor, right? 
is I absolutely hated it when I was young, but I don't mind it now. And it also took me going to Italy and like experiencing fennel the way that they eat it before I got Hands used up. to the flavor. Huh? Hands up, please. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Oh no, those will still be good. It's those okay. okay. It's okay, Sam. I'm just gonna take the the tray a bit down. Is all. It's okay, guys. Just the the sugar and egg wash is making like a super lacy crust. I would show you, but I don't want them to cool down too much. But yeah, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Yeah, did we just jinx the Traeger sketchy? No, it was not the Traeger's fault at all. It's just the recipe itself. Okay, that's good. Let's get into our onion. I also took out this little guy I had in the fridge. Just waiting for Sam to bring out in those other trays. You have bunnies? I bet they would eat fennel. Whoa, that one is pretty much baked though almost, hey? Like show them what happened. It's okay. Like we can literally just take a cookie cutter and just cut that out. But that's what happened on the one edge of the tray is the sugar ended up actually making it worse almost. I think that Sam says he thinks the Traeger was maybe being a bit weird too. But, I mean, at the end of the day, I would still eat the heck out of that. <laughs> I mean, totally. <laughs> I would still eat it. Okay, so oven's on in here. I'm gonna set a five minute timer on there. Yeah, even the parchment blackened because that's how hot the sugar was getting, right? Like what? Oh, yep, that's why I also always check on stuff halfway through because sometimes it doesn't work the same way that they tell you it will in the recipe. And then just from experience, you have to kind of go with your gut feeling, right? Trust yourself and your instincts. Well, I'm still going to eat those. Oh, yeah. Everyone's still fine with it, Sam. Chat said they'll sacrifice those cookies if we needed. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't like serving as perfect. Yeah, Sam's upset because it doesn't look as perfect as last night. That's all. <laughs> Bit of high standards. Possibly. And yeah, so the outside of the cookies Torino, where we did the egg wash and sugar, is kind of burning. It's being weird. Put in the oven. It's going to be okay. Okay, just looking at the onion here, I'm just going to trim up this bit because I don't know what happened to it. There we go. We're good. I know it's okay, Vune. All we did was teach you about so many different ways of preparing beef that you never really considered before. And now you're just experimenting all the different ways with different cuts. No, I wasn't concerned. I was just asking out of curiosity, I suppose. All right, let's start with our onion, guys, and then away we go. Cover it with, yeah, just cover it with Cool Whip or ice cream. <laughs> Good one. Okay, so like I said, nice small dice on all the veg. This is how I cut my onion. So following the natural lines in it. And then we also follow the curve. Then we just come back this way. We got perfect dices. Until we get to uh, usually around this point. I think those are all still separate. Yeah. And now we just let that fall down since it wants to anyway. Slice it in half. Okay. 
and just cut around that like bottom root part because it doesn't cook down or soften up at all. That's just compost. Man, that onion really flew everywhere. Okay, next side. Time is 1.12. Oh yeah, we're laughing. We're laughing. Have we ever made a bloom and onion? No, I've never. Sammy says he has. And he says he's made lots of them. I've eaten it, so I know what it is. But yeah, I've never had to make one, thankfully. What is the best salmon on the West Coast? Personally, I like Chinook or Spring Salmon. But I also don't mind a coho. I think my least favorite would be sockeye. I really enjoy and I was just gonna say, Sam, for like grilling and roasting, I really do enjoy a pink salmon every now and then. It has a very mild flavor, I think. Like yeah. And yeah, the nice thing about the coast here is there's always salmon in season to fish. I don't know if someone set their alarm off or if that's just a backup beeper. But it's not us. So should I contact the other person then? Yeah, if the lady never messaged back. Okay, that's just saying our oven's hot. I'm just gonna wash my hands because I'm gonna have to check out these cookies anyways in 30 seconds. Oh, you could definitely do that, Scarlet. Yeah, crushing up cookies and making a crust from them. So numb. Oh, yeah, Mary. Oh, you're up in Alaska. That's one place that I think is so magical. I can't wait to visit. And King Salmon is pretty top tier, I will say that. <laughs> if you can get your hands on that, heck yeah. Okay, I'm pretty sure this top tray, yeah, is fully baked. <laughs> Look at this beautiful mess. Let those cool off, chunk them up. I would definitely be happy. Just need somewhere to put this. And then the other two trays in here just need a little bit longer still. Pop that one up to the top. Huh. And then let's do, I'm gonna do four more minutes on those ones, guys. I'm just gonna open up this area so I can get a trivet to cool stuff on. And then we're good. Oh man, the smell in here is insane right now from those cookies, should not be allowed. I feel like I've just been salivating the whole morning. I can't talk properly. <laughs> the duck broth. Send help. Yeah, that's sad, Torino. You used to have a lady that would send you salmon and then her hubby got jealous. What the heck's that about? Sharing is caring. Have you heard about Copper River salmon? No, I haven't. Yeah, Mickey, glad you guys don't have smell of vision That's exactly it. Okay, so we're gonna start this soup by sauteing all of this mirepoix together, the carrot, onion, celery. The garlic goes in a little bit later so it doesn't burn because it has a bit more sugars in it than everything else. So next up is all of the long pieces of carrot. We're just gonna cut in half so it fits the knife blade better. And then sometimes when it's small like this, I just pop it up on the flat side and cut it like that. And then I think we'll just go in half. And 
nice little carrot bitties. Scarlet, I would be upset if another woman was feeding your boyfriend, I guess. I guess that's fair to say. But like, I guess you should know the scenario of this situation too, right? Like, Torino was just there for the salmon. <laughs> I think, at least, Torino. <laughs> Don't let me down now. <laughs> yeah, jealousy, understandable, but destructive. I know, right? See, just the salmon. That's all he's saying. Uh, you didn't miss the cookies, though, Dust. We're still working on them. They're coming out of the oven in batches here as we switch from the Traeger because, well, you can see the beautiful mess that ensued, but I'm still so into it. <laughs> okay, keep going on our carrots. There's about a minute left on the timer on the cookies in the oven. Just move these little piles over. So we're gonna be chopping them momentarily. Get through these little bitties. Okay, have a safe drive to Reno. See you in a bit. We will definitely still be here, I'm sure. Copper River produces some of the richest, best tasting wild salmon in the world. Where is that location? I'm sure it's somewhere in BC. Or possible Alaska. How do I store my mini pro dust? I just wrap the cord around the top of it. And then I always keep it with like the bottom part separate, but I never kept the box or anything like that. And I just have it sitting on like a kitchen shelf. That's all. So it's easy to access. Other than that, yeah, nothing fancy at all. Okay, next bit. Almost there. Oh yeah, for sure almost there. I think another three. Should be good. Are those baked or kind of raw still? I'm gonna pop that in. I know that's gonna smoke a bit, but. Pop those in for the next three minutes and that'll finish. Excuse me. Okay, yeah, Copper River is in Alaska. My assumption was correct. Yes. Of course the cookies will be okay. Vune said it, they were. Okay, gonna move some of this over as well. And then gonna just match up the carrots to the same size as the onion. And welcome, Saba Kashan. Thanks for the follow. Oh, I will never forget King Crab, Mary. And that's coming into my life, hopefully, before we leave this time. area. One more time, because A.M. Souk and her hubby also need some more of our seafood bisque that we made with the King Crab. That's been requested for a freezer meal for them. Yeah, pretty low tier requests, I would say, hey? Okay, these little spindly pieces. Let's cut that just a bit longer, I would say, so it doesn't break down too much. Oh, Vune. It changed my life when I tried King Crab this year. It's like I've only ever had Dungeness or Snow Crab. I can't go back, or at least I don't know if I can. So, so good. Thank you, Mary, gifting the sub to Fides. Welcome back to the crew, Fides. I hope you've been well. And Nouvelle, thanks for the follow as well. We're building up our 
food and drink community. Spreading the deliciousness, the best way that we know how. Did you do a King Crab stream? Yes, it was our Valentine's Day stream. We did a King Crab and Lobster Bisque that went with a beef tenderloin. And we also did spicy shrimp noodles was the other request. And that meal altogether was really good. Yeah, Thai, Thai spicy shrimp noodles to go with that. So nom. Okay, next check. Top tray. <gasps> Just want to show you this right now. Um, the chocolate has stuff to say. What the F? It's like bloop, bloop, bloop. Look like a little fish blowing bubbles. A little bit longer on that. And I think same with the bottom one. Another two. And then that should be all of them. Perhaps they were too big or not spaced out enough. It might have, I think it's just the chocolate we used, Scarlet, because it was a Lindor truffle, right? So the outside of it is nice and hard, but the inside is soft and there's a lot more fat in the truffle filling. So that's why I think it spread out just a little bit more than we wanted. But yeah, honestly, I'm not as upset about it. Have I tried dried fish ice cream? Never. Where would you get a thing like that? Or we just have to add a little bit more flour into the dough next time to make up for the chocolate. And then the other thing, just from experience making shortbread with my mom, is the recipe she uses has a bit of cornstarch in it as like a little bit of a binder, right? So that could also be helpful. So those are all the things that I've thought about. They taste really, really good. Yeah, we tried out four of them last night and the flavor is insane. It's like buttery, crunchy, but light. And then you get the chocolate, it's like really dark kind of deep flavor. This is some tough celery. You guys see how I'm chopping it? Crack, crack, crack. It's got some ribs. Okay, we'll get the garlic press out. Oh, no, we won't. Take the cookies out of the oven. Oh my gosh. So nom. So, so nom. Stack that there safely. And the next ones. Okay. Also, <laughs> um, <laughs> A bit of a problem. <laughs> I'm going to just put this in the fridge for a sec. I'm just going to put it in the fridge. We can't do the buns until we have enough trays to put them on. So the cookies have got to cool down a bit more. <laughs> so yeah, I felt like something was staring at me. Do you have room for the last 
Oh yeah, I turned, or I didn't quite turn off the oven, no, but let's pop those in for sure. Here, you take this. You'll deal with that deal with big this. dough baby. Okay, let's see how this little tray bakes up. So I'll do our 10 minutes. Yeah, go ahead, ignore me. See if I care, the dough says. No, that's for, I was supposed to put it in the fridge over on the other side. Hello, FCB, and welcome back. How is your Friday going? Who had the loudest laugh first? I don't know. Me or Sam? I am not sure. I mean, I think Sam's always louder than me. Yeah, Orca. Well, Sam's older, so we'll just say that. <laughs> Just keep pressing. Can't wait to start cooking this chowder. It's gonna smell, well, it's been smelling good this whole morning. So I don't even know what to say. Hi, Annie. Good to see you. How are you doing? And we got FCB is doing great. So far an easy day. Awesome. That is definitely good to hear. Not sure about tonight though. Oh no. Well, I wish you luck then. Hopefully everything works out. Nice, Annie. In half an hour, I'm going to meet a real estate agent and drop off a check for $10,000. Congrats. I'm so excited for you. So, so excited. He did the dang thing. I knew it would come. Like just when you're ready to give up, that's when the best thing comes along. Okay, clean all of that goodness out. No waste. We'll scrape the bottom and then this has got to go soak. Sticky mess. Yes, that's right, Annie. I was saying I hope Annie comes by today. I know it's Friday, so he's he's busy with school still. But we were talking about making a mango lassi. Do you have a recipe for one? I was going to just do the mango, the yogurt, and some ice. And blend it up. Yeah, we got to send Annie some baked goods for his housewarming. <laughs> I'll send some cookies over for sure. Okay, garlic's all done. So I'm going to move that just over here in this busy spot. Also going to steal this other trivet. So I can cool our cookies properly. Excuse me. You want either pistachios or almonds as well in the lassie? That one I didn't know. What about coconut? Because I don't think I have either of those nuts. I have a little bit of cashew. Oh, I need these towels because this is really hot. Okay, there we go. Then I think I'll just move all of these over as well so we can have a nice little soup station. Co-mingling and organizing. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. 
cashew would work? Yes. Yeah. Should I do it, Bonk? Ship the whole cookie dough roll? I mean, then I'd have to figure out how to cool it, though. So for shipping from here, it always makes more sense to have it baked already. I wonder. I wonder. Wow, Bonk. Can't even view a house there unless you're even pre-approved. What? And yeah, Scarlet, that's so cool. One of my aunts, who sadly is no longer with us, RIP, she did Reiki and I did a session with her when I was young and it was one of the coolest experiences ever. Okay, baking the cookies. I'm crossing that one off. We just have one tray still in the oven. So also our bundle has been proofed. So once we get the chowder going, we can divide up the bundle. We just had to get our cutting board clear here. And then the next thing we have to chop up real quick is just some potatoes. Can't have a chowder without potato. Ah, very cool. You're not a practitioner yet, but you're learning the course. And you need to get an attunement. Interesting. Okay, come back over. So I said, we're gonna try to leave the skin on these as much as we can. Let's just peel off any parts that are not so nice. Yeah, once you're tuned, you can do like sound healing on Twitch. I'm intrigued by this. I've never really heard of that before, but I like learning about different stuff. So yeah, just peel off what we don't need. Get those eyes out. <laughs> That's a bit aggressive. Oh, Crux. Yeah, check out the recipe. This is going to be a blast to chat, but it's linked there, the first one. We've made it a few times before on stream, and it's one of my faves. Very non-traditional, but there's a ton of flavor. And yeah, it kind of opens up your mind to a different style of chowder. BB Bubs, thanks, dude. Yeah, we're measing right along. Chowder mees for the win. And this was something that I always loved taking the responsibility for is there's usually a soup of the day in most kitchens. I would always make the soup. Not always with this beautiful mirepoix. Sometimes it was just a simple blended one, but I enjoy making soups. Okay, so potato will cut just a little bit bigger than our mirepoix, so it doesn't just fall apart into this. So let's do slices like that, like half inch maybe. So I'll start by doing all the slices and then we'll come back, do our little strips and then dice. You bake fish on a mirror. Is that mirepoix? <laughs> Too good. We've missed these jokes, right, chat? We swear it. We did. <laughs> How's the move going, bub? Oh, yeah. How are things, BB bubs? How's life? Life in general. Orca's going to grab some beverage. Sounds good. We'll be here. Okay, so now 
think what we're gonna do should be able to stack up two by two at least. I always take off the outer edge as well. So now we're gonna make our piles. like that. Check on our cookies as well. And then away we go. Yeah, even those ones are spreading a bit. Maybe we just needed a touch more flour. Touch more flour and a bit of a more structured chocolate. But you never know if you don't try with different stuff. It's looking good still. Better than it looked baking on the Traeger. So I'll do another seven and then that should be good. The wedding is on Monday. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so stressful, but good stress. I'm so excited for you. Okay, so this I'm just gonna go in half, in half in half and then we can line those up. We're gonna keep this all separate. So chunkers like that. And I'm just gonna get a bowl to put the potato in. Yeah, wow, Annie. So excited to play on your piano again. One more. The lady? Okay. Just keep chopping. I'm in knife skill land right now. But it is okay if the potato falls apart just a touch. It is true. Okay, so we'll do three cuts and then all the way across so we get these nice cubes. So yeah, just a bit bigger than the, the mirepoix that we did. And then because we cut the potatoes a bit bigger, they'll obviously have to simmer for a little bit of time too to get it cooked through, right? And that's why we always, or I always add the fish for the chowder right at the end. Otherwise it'll get super overcooked and dry. That's not enjoyable. Mary, thank you very much. Also gifting this sub to Scarlet Luna. We've had Scarlet with us for two months in a row already, too. Welcome back to the crew, friends. And thank you, Mary, for helping to build up our community. Yeah, that's fair, Annie. You don't want to stream in case someone from school finds it. That would be perfect, wouldn't it, Scarlet? I'm cooking, Annie. We got Annie and Cookie in the background playing piano. Mm. Vune singing. Yeah, we're good. We're set. Powerful community. Orca, what are your skills? 
Are you a drummer? We got a guitarist in here? Okay, there's our potatoes. Guitar, perfect. I was gonna say, I thought Dust played an instrument. You're like my brother then. Brother plays guitar as well. Okay, let's pop those over here. And I think we're good to start this chowder. I think I'm gonna turn on the pot back there. I feel like we're in a pretty good spot. Got most of the mies done. We just have to open up some cans, but it will take about 10 minutes to cook down this veg. That gives us time to do some other stuff. <laughs> yeah, mythical. I play video games terribly. <laughs> Set up a little Discord band to play over the stream. BB Bubs, that's brilliant, isn't it? Does someone else play the drums or is it you, Lauren? Are you the drummer? Okay, finally fully caffeinated. Whew. That was a tough black coffee. Yeah, we got a bass guitar. We got the full band, Annie. Let's go. Okay, going over to the stove. Look at this goodness here. So we're going to turn this on to medium high. And let's start with just some grapeseed oil in the bottom there. And this is our duck chicken broth that's been cooking away here. This is day two of it. So definitely enough oil to coat the bottom of the pot. We don't want any stickage here. Yeah, cook with Kate Band. And then one other thing I still have to do is blend up some coriander seed. So I will do that real quick with our dry blender. Yeah, out of all the instruments that you can play, I think I would always choose drums just because I really enjoyed playing it on rock band. But I think in real life I would crush it. Cool, Scarlett, your best friend messaged you from Croatia. Let's do, what, half of that big? I don't always blitz up all the coriander seed because it'll stay fresher that way. I'll put it in here. Oh, that's the cookie timer. One moment. That's almost done. Two moments. Good to go. Okay, do we got a waviness yet? We could also just test by tossing in a little bit. Nope, no sizzling yet. No sizzling yet. Yeah, that would be a pretty big trend. I could see it too. Hello, Strike Nun. How are you doing? We almost said hello to Stream Elements. <laughs> Annie. Okay, so just filled the blender with the coriander seed. If you have headphones on, would maybe be careful with the sound of this as it can be loud. <laughs> Somebody got chocolate both. Mmm. I think that's delicious. Mmm. Yeah. What do you do? Mmm. I was trying to stack these up. No, it's okay. Okay, I no, think I'm good. Really no. You just gotta 
lick your mouth, that's all. Okay, I'll get it. You're deciding on dinner? Okay, ready? We're ready. I'm gonna get this to focus a little bit different for us. I just have to swivel the one pot for the camera. Okay, I do need you. Just take the tray out. The cloths are right there. Please and thank you. I need you. Okay, I need you. I need you. Since you're close to your redemption and it's winter recipes, would rather have you DM and redeem, <coughs> excuse me, now or redeem when we're back from the food truck adventure? I mean, that's up to you, Orca. What do you mean back from the food truck adventure? We're going to be doing that food truck adventure <laughs> for like a good couple years. So we're not really coming back here. But I would recommend like the requests that you have should be in season, right? Because it'll be hard for me to source the ingredients for winter recipes if it's summertime, right? But we can wait or you just pick a different one and you save those for winter time. We're not going anywhere. So yeah, that's all I got to say about that. <laughs> yeah, Annie, food truck adventure is the rest of their lives. Okay, so that last tray is out. I can finally turn off the oven now that my board is clear. So I guess there's no rush on the bundo if it's in the fridge, right? Okay, so we're good then. I'm just going to move this over a bit. And then this in a bit. Focus. Yeah, it's this other pot. This one. Thank you. <laughs> it's like, no, Kate, I will not. Why are you being like this? We were friends yesterday. Just grabbing a spoon so I can stir that. Oh, yeah, return to here for the hunting season. But then when we're here, that's all we're going to be doing for our friends, Orca is processing their food, right? It'll be either a full one week doing different stuff every day or maybe even up to two weeks, depending on how many people want to use our services. But yeah, don't, please don't stress out about your guys' redemptions. We'll always work it out together. Okay, there's that. Organize this a bit. So this is going to cook until it's just starting to turn golden brown. And then we add the garlic to it. Move this over. Bring our cans over because that's what I'm getting into next. Five cans of coconut milk two cans of tomatoes. And then, like I said, I'm gonna do our coriander seed. So watch your ears, guys. Watch your ears. This might be a little bit loud. <laughs> go, Orpha, go! <laughs> Thank you. Honestly, one of my favorite smells. Give this a tap. Sometimes it sticks to this side. It smells so fresh. Mmm. Okay, I'm gonna do one more little blitz, but that's how she's looking so far. It's almost got like a lime. A floral lime scent. How's this stuff? 
Let's give it a quick stir. Holy, that cat's going crazy. Okay, so we're just starting to cook the moisture out of the veggies. That's good. Okay, loud one more time. So much fun. Okay, fill up our container. And that's why I always do the fresh ground coriander. Let you guys peek over here since that camera doesn't want to focus for us anyways. So that's what it should look like. Pop it into our jar. I like to use this just so it doesn't spill. Pastis. Yeah, I can't recall what that one is. Oh wait, isn't that like a little cookie? Isn't it a little cookie with, yeah, it has like a little bit of a licorice flavor. I think I know what you're talking about, Annie. That's all good. Just the right amount. Now we can pop back over. What were you doing, Sama? I just put the camera in for you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we can pop back over to that view then. That's perfect. We definitely need a stir. Look at this stuff is browning up. So I just turned down the heat now that we got some browning action. Now it's at a medium heat. That was close. And you can definitely tell where the hot spot on this pot is. Okay. So now I'm gonna keep working on opening up these cans here. I'll open up the can of Chipotle. Deuce McGillicuddy, thanks for the follow. <laughs> you have the same one, Zinc? The Le Set one. I mean, we'll probably maybe get another one because we love it so much. So here is our Chipotle and Adobo. Get one more large one and then two of the smaller ones to put inside. Yeah. That just needs to get filled and then we're good. That's just extra. Just can go back. Just co mingling some stuff currently. Oh, there's a lake crusade in them as well. Ooh. <laughs> what a dog. What a dog. Did she calm on down? Okay, she calmed on down now. So we'll let that keep cooking out. Oh, man bonk. Sorry that we never really got anything done. Well, we got the cookies done and those are delicious. Hope you have a wonderful day at work, bonk. As always, don't work too hard and can't wait to see you tomorrow. See ya, manana. Whoa, I didn't see you there, sorry. <laughs> The look that I got just now when you almost step on the doggo's feet when they're vacuuming. She's like, excuse me. <laughs>
Okay, I'm just opening all the cans here together. And yeah, right? We wish that Le Creuset that wasn't so expensive. But uh, quality is quality. Quality is quality. And that's one thing that just saying from experience, buying different quality cast iron, stuff like that. Spending a little bit more early on really pays off later on. Like all of our expensive kitchen equipment should outlast our lifetime if we treat it with care and respect. That is true as well, Annie. Yeah, Le Creuset has pretty good sales occasionally. So you just have to watch for that. And I will recommend, why would you pay full price for anything if you can actually wait? Do you really need it now? <laughs> That's what you gotta ask yourself, right? Okay, so tomatoes are opened. I think we'll do a quick stir again. Oh yeah, we're getting there. And yeah, once we have the base ready for the chowder, all we gotta do to finish it is pop the fish in, let it cook probably about 10 minutes to get it heated through, and then you're done. So even if we get the base of the chowder ready early, just turn it back on to low, pop your fish in when it's time, and everything will be nice and fresh. Oh, that's a busy day, Mary. Clean the kitchen, vacuum, and take care of your pepper for the birthday. The lodge stuff, I would say, is great, Dust. Never had an issue with lodge. Oh, it's cast iron. It's a perfect, like, mid-price point as well. Mmm, this coconut milk when there's all the fat on the lid still. <laughs> yeah, Mary, I'm supposed to do all this stuff, but here I am. I can't look away. I'm watching Kate. A lot of people just pop us on and like just listen to us in the background while they do their chores. That's trending right now. This can opener, I don't really love because it always puts those little papery bits. Stop it. Yeah, totally dust. <laughs> I don't feel called out at all. No, no way, Vune says. <laughs> well, I only say it because I do the same thing, right? Oh, I always pop on pretty you know. Like yesterday, I, after our raid in Delhi stream, while I was cleaning up, is I just had them up here in front of me, and it was awesome. It's awesome to hang out for once. Okay, I hear some sizzles back there again. I think it's almost time for another stir. Yep. <laughs> love how the one, the older brother wanted to try the really, really hot, hot sauce. And Del's just like, I, if I do that, I will be an irresponsible parent. I don't even want it for myself. <laughs> Never mind giving it to you. Yeah, Lauren was there with us too. It was just super cute. I left two people behind. Oh, we got some lurkers. Thanks for the lurk, Zink. Is that what you're saying, Orca? Hey, we got all the cans opened. Oh, sorry, no we don't. Just kidding. Still got the clams. And these ones, I'm not gonna open on the board because usually it's filled to the top with the liquid. And I hate getting clam juice on my wooden cutting board, right? Yeah, he is raising some good kids for sure. That's exactly what I said to Sam yesterday watching. 
Huh? Yes, sir. No, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. No, sir. So much manners and respect. Oh, yesterday I raided someone, but you never got in the raid. I was saying, like, it was only a raid of, like, 30 people. I think Twitch, we broke it. We broke Twitch yesterday in the raid. <laughs> Unknown. Okay, I'm just going to cross off chowder because we're pretty much done it. Let's open up these clamors. So this is what I'm opening now. Whole baby clams in water is what we're looking for. Yeah, yeah, totally. Totally, Lauren. Or when he made the one kid try the salad that he didn't like. <laughs> that was my favorite part. Yeah, that was so cute. I like this. I don't even know who you are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And yeah, I just permitted hot and loin in chat. I don't know if that's going to get us in trouble one day. <laughs> okay, check out our little clamors. Doot -doot -doot. I think we're ready for garlic. I'm going in. I'm going for it. So anytime we let things brown, whether it's veggies or meats, we're always going to get more flavor in the end. Because we're caramelizing the proteins, the sugars, the fats, all of the good stuff. So that's why slow cooking also just always tastes so heckin' good. Good things take time. So we'll let that go for a bit, and then we will be adding our spices next. Give those a little sizzle up. Just grabbing a bowl here so we can crush our tomatoes. And first, I'm gonna take another quick bathroom break. So watch my pot for me. Hold tight, I will be right back. Okay, I'm back. I got held up. Sammy had to show me his satisfactory. And hey, Thrash, how are you doing? Everyone thought the orange name was Titan. Haha. <laughs> I'm not the only one who's human. Got him. Yeah, welcome, Thrash. Sorry that you were mistaken for somebody else. It happens. Hope you're having a great Friday so far, though. Okay, that is smelling insanely delish. So how much spices do we need here? You're doing great? That's good to hear. Okay, so they say for eight servings, 
two teaspoons of coriander, one teaspoon of cumin. I'm just gonna do a tablespoon of each. I've made this soup a lot of times before, so I know what it needs. Let's just say that. Yeah, the pot didn't run away. Phew. <laughs> Problem is that everything has gone to pot. The pot was smoked? Orca, how dare you? Yeah, we'll just sizzle the garlic a bit more. And then once we get the spices in, we can then start to loosen it up, really create our broth. We'll add the chipotles, the coconut milk, Worcestershire, and the tomatoes. And then if we need any more liquid, I might do a quick few ladles out of that duck pot, because why not? Welcome, Humes. Yeah, how are we doing? So far, so good. Everything's turning out great. Sun's shining. We're cooking right along. Chowder has been started. Hope that you're doing all right. I really got a thirst today, guys. Yes, see, once you add the garlic, it really wants to kind of stick. Okay, it's spice time. Cumin, coriander, our tablespoon. Yesterday, the faculty got together outside without masks. First time you've socialized with faculty all year long. Does that mean everyone's vaccinated then? Okay, so tablespoon of coriander. Oh, like just under a tablespoon of cumin because it's quite strong. That. All the faculty who were there were vaccinated. That's so awesome. And I'm really looking forward to that. We're getting there, hey guys? We're getting there. Slowly but surely. Mmm, how fragrant it gets when we stir the spices in to the hot veggies and oil. Yummies. Just grab a spoon to get those chipotles out of the can. And I'm not going to add more than one can of chipotle and adobo. You are knackered, Humes. Filleted fish for 11 hours today at work? Probably fall asleep at the keyboard. Oh my gosh, what kind of fish were you filleting? That's awesome. Okay, so for the eight portions, they do only a quarter cup of the chipotle and adobo. Which I think is half the can anyway, so that does make sense. Makes sense. Yeah, we got our Europeans. They're staying up late for us. One. Let's just see how many peppers are in here. Two, three, four. There's six peppers. Do you think that's too much, Sam? In like 12 liters? No, it won't be. It couldn't possibly. I'm just going to rinse that out with a touch of water and pop that in there. Little deglaze almost. Yummies. And then let's just give it a little stir in the center here. Kind of calm this down. Oh man. Okay. And then it's coconut milk time. Wow, that's never worked so good before. I guess I should leave it out at room temp more often. That was so smooth. Just the shake and it drops out. Pro.
This one's like, nope, not getting me. That is thick. Yum. That's coconut cream right there. Coconut milk. Mm. Especially that one. Really brings me back to Thailand. Okay, give this a stir. I'm also leaving the corn and the peas out until the end so they keep their structure and nice fresh flavor and color. So now we can start to loosen this up with the broth beside. I'm going to add a little splash of this Worcestershire here. Then we're done with that. And hi, hi, Mish. How are you? Oh, you were doing 11 hours filleting sea bream? Crazy. Oh, wait, you also did cod, monkfish, halibut, salmon, red snapper. So cool. Thanks for sharing, Humes. You definitely have some skills, hey? Can't wait to maybe use our skills together. Oh, yummy, Frank. Frank's getting a Polish rhubarb cake in the oven at 11, 11 p.m. Love it. That's commitment. Okay, I'm just doing a drop of this, like maybe a tablespoon. That's it. We'll pop that away. And then we still got to cut up our fish, right? But that should be pretty simple. All right, I'm just going to get a big ladle. Two ladlefuls of this goodness. And then we're going to come back to the cutting board real quick. And crush up our tomatoes together with our hands. And then those can go in the pot too. So just sift out the whole tomatoes from the juice the best you can. It already looks so divine. It is so heckin' good, this soup, Lauren. Here, I'm just going to go over now and pour the tomato juice in. Oh, yummy. She made the lime flavored cheesecake and it's amazing. So happy to hear that. So now I'm just going to rinse that out with water again. Maximize what we can get out. Pop that in. So just small amounts of water so far. So let's start with this. Oh, of course it did, right? Of course it went over the first tomato that I opened. Do I know the fish lump fish? I don't think so. Should I? I'm literally making a mess. Have fun with it, Dust. There's really cute birdies outside the window right now. He's singing his little song. Lumpfish roe is what you call Danish caviar. It's like a red roe. Mia Mish. Might as well come to Danada then. Someone's asking in Discord, what kind of foods can you cook in a toaster oven or a frying pan? A, a potato masher will work. It could, but it's probably even more messy. And I am wearing a white shirt. 
you know. So, I mean, kind of different foods in both scenarios of cooking devices, right? Like what you're gonna cook in a toaster oven, probably not what the same thing that you're gonna cook in a frying pan. I think they should streamline their question a bit more. Otherwise, that'll take forever to answer. Yeah, keep answering in chat, guys. I would be interested to know where everyone is from. Hey, there's dust. Hey guys, what kind of food can you cook in an oven? Yeah, dust is an A. What are you pertaining to? Like you can cook a lot of different stuff in the oven. You can roast, you can braise, you can bake. <laughs> Strike none raw ones. Oh, okay. I thought maybe you were the one who posted in Discord, so I was legit trying to help you. <laughs> no, they're just trolling me. Okay, cool. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> yeah, me too, Lauren. Okay, that's the first can done. We'll pop that over. Oh, God. Don't splash it. That was close. Tomatoes on the ceiling? I don't think so. Oh, okay. It's not my Discord? Okay. I was like, I would be surprised that people are asking that in our Discord. Straighten in the juices. Okay, so we're about a third full so far in our 18 liter pot. We still have two liters to add of the corn and the peas. This is gonna be about another liter, let's say. We got a liter of potatoes. So yeah, we'll definitely be making minimum 10 liters, if not more, probably closer to 12 by the time we add the fish as well. Okay, let's finish these up. Okay, good luck, Annie. Yeah, you got the text message. Go, go, go. And once again, congratulations. Yeah, sounds a bit sus. Oh, that's something that we watched last night. You saying sus just reminded me of it. At the beginning of the pandemic, did anyone watch the Squirrel Obstacle Course? that was on YouTube done by a, a physics teacher. Yeah, Mark Rober is his name. So absolutely hilarious. Look it up if you haven't, but he did a second part to it. It took him like a couple months to work on it. Just released part two, epic. So, so good. Yeah, exactly, Lauren. So we watched that last night and it was just the best. Frank is so smart. Just a legend. <laughs> oh, you haven't seen it yet? Oh, you're gonna love it, Lauren. You're seriously gonna love it. It's just as good as the first one. So I'm not gonna wreck anything for you. Yeah, so cute and wholesome, totally. Love that stuff. Okay, done with that. And then it'll cook down the rest of the way, but I like the little chonkers. So just quickly pop that. Now that's most of our liquids in there already, right? I don't add the juices from the canned clams because I find it to be quite salty. So I'll drain that out as well. So yeah, let's, Kind of determine now how much more liquid we should pop in here so that we can properly cook the fish as well later. I'm just gonna wipe those tomato juice off my cutting board first. 
And then this is a good spot to take out the bun dough and get that ready to go. And then we'll cut up the fish last, I think. Bundo, yeah, we're doing potato buns for dipping into the soup today, Strike on the King Arthur baking recipe. Exploding in the fridge right now, proofing up. Just gonna grab my spoon holder here as well. I'm making a mess on my counter. It's really, really a good recipe. Would definitely recommend it. For everyone who hates snails in the garden, watch the animation. We have usually only a couple cute little snails. They're like yellow and black striped. Like I said, they look so cute. Slugs though in the garden. Yeah, we definitely hate that. Okay, look at how that just transformed. Yum. And wow, this smell, so good. And that's the thing is you can still taste the seafood in this. All of the flavor that we've added, it still doesn't overpower anything, which I think is important. Okay, I'm gonna do more ladles from over here. Two more. At least. And because this is a reduced stock, we can go about adding a touch of water and it won't, won't be bad. Do one more and then we'll add a touch of water. And then we just got to add our potatoes in and let those simmer until they're cooked. So water. I think I'll do a liter. Still haven't baked since leaving the bakery, but you're considering entering the State Fair Baking Comp. Do it! I think that sounds like a really fun thing for you to do, Strike Nun. Because you got all the skills. So just have fun with your skills now. Okay, so I'm just going to bring this up to a little bit more of a simmer before we drop the potatoes. So in this moment, we're going to package up a bit of cookies together with Sam. Because I'm thinking we're going to need four sheet pans for the buns. Yeah, you show those grandmas, exactly. <laughs> Roll in right along. And then I'll also take out that bundo so I can just come back up to temp. It's easy to work with. We about to explode. Here she is, Strike Nun. <laughs> She's under wraps. Hmm. That whole stack smells delicious. It smells so, so good, Sam. Yeah, that's a good looking tray, isn't it? Okay, that's that. I'm gonna save the big board for the fish. So I think we'll do the buns just right on this. Let's see the recipe if you use flour, or oil. I'm going to assume flour. Oh, it actually does say a lightly greased surface. Okay, then. So try not to use oil. And because of the butter in here, I don't think it'll really stick to your hands. Yeah, top notch. Man, oh man. Should probably let some of this out. Whew. There we go. Look at this. 
That's how the cookies packed up. So this strike nun, just letting you know what this was, it was supposed to be a shortbread, but we ended up using the, I think I'll leave this open still, Lindor truffles in it for the dark chocolate. So I think that's why it fell apart. Or would you say that there wasn't quite enough flour to keep it together? What do you think? Oh, no worries, Humes. We will be back tomorrow as well as Sunday if you want to pop by then. Yeah, you go rest up. I know you had a really long day, but thank you for, like, attempting to hang out with us. Trust me. After most uh, 11, 12-hour days, yeah, it's kind of hard to keep your eyes open when you get home and finally sit down, right? Okay, that's good. Yeah, this is the recipe from yesterday, the cookie dough. So we let it chill overnight. And then the other weird thing was like the egg wash. The egg wash and sugar outside almost started to burn. Got one more to add to that. Good one, Mary. You're killing it. these over here stacked up. Did you count no, I didn't. Okay. I just know that the first two trays I did eight cookies. So I need four times two So you got already enough. Yes. I'm just stacking them here because they're still kind of cooling. And then guys, I'm going to tear... I'll start with three parchment papers torn for the pans. And then we'll do one more if we feel like it needs it. Midnight Orchid, yeah, they look so good. Oddly enough, it looks like when someone at the bakery would over mix it. Really, I barely even touched the dough yesterday. But I'm thinking that it's the inside of the truffle for the chocolate has a lot more cocoa butter in it, right? Doesn't really stay together the same way. That was my thought. Do we have a link to the Lindor balls? I wish we had an affiliate link. That is actually something I was thinking of working on, is a chocolate sponsorship would be a killer. Thank you. How many more do you need? Oh, we're good. Okay. We're good now. I got four. That should be lots. Could very well be strike then. Yeah. So like I said, is I use the Lindor chocolate truffles cut up into there rather than like just a typical dark chocolate chopped up. So that's what I'm thinking happens. Put that. Oh, it tastes super, super good. It's still light. Crispy, buttery, chocolatey. Oh, so the flavors in the boxes, we got just the regular milk one, which is the red truffle. There is a blue one that's a dark chocolate. There's a black one that's 70% cacao. The green one is pistachio. There, or the light green one's pistachio. A dark green one is salted caramel chocolate. I think that's all the flavors we got. Just gonna leave this parchment back here. Oh, and what color is hazelnut? Dark brown. Oh yeah, dark brown is hazelnut flavor. And white. Oh yes, and yellow is white. See, I'm even forgetting them. Yeah, so we were saying, Orca, like imagine using the pistachio chocolate and then coating the outside of the cookies in crushed pistachio before you cut and bake them. It's got to be good. Yeah, the red is so heckin' good. So, so good.
You started to smell it and you're like, this isn't okay. Is that what you did? <laughs> yeah, there's the recipe zinc. It's the first one linked there. And then the second one is our buns, which we're just getting into. And the last one is the cookies. All right. So it's gonna be a bit sticky for sure. I'll take out the flour bin just in case I feel like we need it. And then we're always gonna start with our bench scraper. Let's open this up so you can see more. Oh, I gotta fill up the flour bin. That's right, that's right. That's right, that's right. Sounds good, Orca. We'll be here. What up? Okay, we're all topped up. Away we go. Yeah, because I don't have any other big cutting boards to cut the fish on. So we got to be good. Good and clean here. And then usually I just put down like one layer of flour and then scrape away most of it. Just to get the initial dough ball to not stick. So all I usually do, just kind of start with our hands, get it away from that top edge. And then we just come in with our bench scraper. Help it away from the outside. And then I'm gonna go for a pour. Is now a $10,000 flesh rich. Oh no. <laughs> that came out pretty heckin' clean. And yeah, welcome wow. back, Annie. That looks good. Right? So that's what happens when you put butter into a dough recipe. Way less stickage. that back onto there. Same with that goodness. And then what am I feeling? Just work a little bit of flour up onto this guy. And now we're gonna start dividing. And then maybe to help us just a bit, kind of make sure that nothing is stuck under here either before we start, cause then it'll get super messy. And then usually I kind of pull it into at least a rectangle sort of shape. We'll divide this in half. And then each half should go into 12. I'm just gonna open it up a bit more. like that, cut it in half again, and then we know that each goes into six. This feels absolutely amazing, the dough as well. I'm so excited for you, Annie, seriously. I can't wait to come visit now. Is that why you felt like you had to pull the plug? You're like, Kate and Sammy are going on their adventure soon. I have to have a place for them to stay. <laughs> No, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I know this has been in the works for literally years. 
I'm like, thanks for taking us along on the way too, Annie. It's been fun to support you. Room in the driveway for the truck. Yo, that's pretty important one, isn't it? <laughs> thanks, Annie. There's a big bubble in there. So I'm just doing rough dividing right now. Obviously we can come back after if it looks like some are smaller than the others. Our soup is just about ready to come up to a simmer. And then we'll pop those potatoes in to get them cooking. Okay, why don't we leave this little piece for now? Otherwise, I don't know if we're gonna have enough room on the cut-in board to roll this. So now, we have a couple different ways to do this. You can take it into your hand, kind of squeeze and stretch it this way. And we're continuously working the dough. Just need a bit more flour. It's just a touch sticky. Just work in the dough until it's nice and smooth and the seam is underneath. It actually seems like this dough is wanting a little bit of flour, so I'm not scared to use it. So there we go. And then that just goes onto our lined sheet pan. So I usually like to do six buns per tray. But I'm gonna do this a different way just on the cutting board. So I'm going in a counterclockwise motion. I'm also left-handed. So pushing with my thumb and kind of bringing back with the rest of my fingers and the dough ball is just kind of sitting on my palm. You can see though, when it starts to stick, you need a bit more flour. You need friction, but you also don't want it to stick to your hand. Enzo. So this pan in particular, Annie, it was actually a jelly roll pan. So I'm sure you know what a jelly roll is. The thin cake that gets rolled with the spiral of usually like whipped cream in the middle. So that is there to help that very thin cake come off easily. Yeah, one in each hand. It's been forever. I can try though. I think I have enough room here. I used to though, with pizza dough. Yeah, see, it's just a little bit sticky. So don't be afraid to use flour. It does help. <gasps> you guys actually had a legit food fight at school. That was always something I hoped for. I always hoped to be involved in a real life food fight. You know, the ones that you saw in the movies, but it never happened. So I'm so jealous right now. Accidentally hit the principal with a stale cafeteria bun and he had you charged. Okay, I'm, I'm not jealous anymore. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh, it's a joke. Okay. <laughs> I didn't read the last part. No, Chow was going too fast, I think. It's scrolling up. And I got bun hands right now. Okay, assault with a breadly weapon. I don't know why, but I skipped over that pun and I thought it was just an autocorrect. <laughs> okay. There's our first tray. So to keep these nice and warm, let's say, as well as keeping them from drying out, I always just put a clean dish towel over. And obviously we will want to keep those in a semi-warm space until we feel like they're ready to be baked. We'll do the buns on the Traeger though. Yeah. Yeah, that should be good. Okay, next. Chowder is almost simmering. I was just taking a peek back there. 
You were too shy of a kid. I was very shy as a kid as well, so I feel ya. It's like, what was wrong with me? <laughs> in a DD, and d you were in an instigated food fight. Was fun because the dungeon master just had punished you with a bad card. Oh, yeah, food fight for Orca. I've never played D&D, &D, but I think I would like it. Oh, that's pretty good, Annie. Chased you and you ran right into the vice principal. Yeah, excuse me, boys. What were you doing? <laughs> Where I was definitely not up to no good. Burst out laughing. Of course he did. Didn't end well for Annie. <laughs> you gotta watch the dungeon run, Frank. Is that a show about D and D? I'm assuming so. Buns, my list says 350 Fahrenheit for 15 to 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah, no crying over spilt milk. It's so sticky sometimes. Stop it. Bun, 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 bun. And then we got 12 more to do, Orca. More, more, more. So second tray complete. Got to line up the next ones. I think Sam can do that for us when he comes back in though, so I don't have to wash my hands again. Pardon? Are you okay to just tear a parchment for our last two pans so I don't have to wash my hands again? Mm -hmm. Oh, Archangel. Potato bread is really nummy. I love it. It's got like a nice, nice structure from the potato flakes in it. Did you say one more? I will need both of the ones that are just standing here. Oh, I already had one there. Sweet. Thank you. And can you, can you press it into yeah. it as well? Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Sorry to disturb you. And then also these buns, I would say they have a little bit of a sweetness to them from the potatoes as well, right? And other than that, they're just like so soft and fluffy. I think they're perfect for dipping with soup. Okay, maybe now that I have more room on the board, I can attempt double. a double. I'm going double. You'd love to try this soup as well? Yes. Yeah, I would recommend. If you're a fan of chowder or seafood in general, try this one out. It's really different compared to like a New England style or Manhattan or Boston for that matter. That look roughly all the same size, I would say. Seems like a little bit bigger. Maybe we'll trim this. Pop that on there. Should be good. All right. Question, does anyone have a partner that uses large spoons for ice cream instead of the actual ice cream scooper? <laughs> yeah, I, that was me. I don't know why, what's wrong with me? I don't know why I did that, Mary. Yeah, beat him with the spoon, strike none says until it's straight again. <laughs> That's my chat, savage. Let him eat with the bent spoons only. See, 
Just solve problems so quickly. Yeah, that took a turn. Mary's husband. <laughs> okay, let me see if I can do this. It's all about like not watching and just feeling. No, I think this... Look at my right hand. It doesn't work good. It's not even moving. Maybe there's a touch too much flour. Okay, I'll flip it and try again. Yeah, we don't have enough friction there. I'm upset. But with pizza dough though, no problem. On the stainless counter, we're having a ball. Yep. And thanks, White Dove. It's nice to see you. Hope your Friday has been good. This dough is really looking nice today, hey? I think it's better oh, than the last one I did. Word cleans up. Clean up crew. <laughs> Ampsan, nice thing about living alone. You can eat the ice cream straight out of the container. I smell some simmerage. Yes, I do. Okay, that's gonna come down. And then when we add our potatoes, it's gonna cool it right down, right? So good, good thing to do now. Kind of go down the side of the pot so it doesn't splash. And we'll give that a stir. Otherwise, I'm sure the potatoes will stick to the bottom. Perfect. So potato in the chowder and potato in the bun. And now those will have to simmer, I would say, oh, 15, 10, 15 minutes until it's just cooked through. You used to work at a bakery with your friends. You love playing with the dough. Yeah, I like how you say it's like playing with the dough because that means you had fun with it. That's how I always feel. Yeah, Mish, where's the feta? I know it really is so smooth looking. Smoother than a baby's bottom almost. Almost. <laughs> 27 people have posted complaints about the lack of feta. We still got a full container in the fridge. Four trays of buns. We got buns, hun. Need one more towel. Orca's sneaking the feta. Hey, that's sabotage. You. <laughs> yeah, can I has? I was gonna say, I don't know if you guys would like it because it's sheep's feta, but that would only work on a North American. <laughs> Doesn't work on the Europeans. They're like, whatever, Kate, that's how our feta is already made. Frank, fastest dessert ever. Microwave banana, one minute with some syrup. Dark chocolate pieces on it. Wait, what kind of syrup are we talking here? Serve with ice cream and orange juice? This is madness. But I mean, I don't knock stuff until I try it. Yeah, the currency is feta. <laughs> That's how our menu will be priced out. It's like this sandwich costs $12 or half a tub of feta. <laughs> Terrible. We don't have any fun here ever. Microwaved apples with butter and brown sugar. Mmm, kind of like a baked apple. Yum, Annie. <laughs> Dust. Microwave bananas, that's enough from me, dog. Brought me back to American Idol with that reference. It's gonna be enough from me, dog.
I don't know, is the orange juice on the side for like a, just a tasty beverage or is it in the mix? I have questions. Last tray. Sammy already turned the Traeger on. So these just have to proof on up. Yeah, if I come back to the first tray, she's already been doing that. You can see how much larger those are compared to the other one. So I would say about 15 minutes on the counter before those go in the oven. Be good to go. Awesome. That feels good to have that done. And we already got our cookies packed. That's another thing we're ahead of. Our potatoes are just simmering away. Let's do a quick cleanup. And then we got to cut our fish up for the chowder still. And that is it, I believe, for processes today. Yeah, scrape all of that up. Yeah, the guy who did Ricky Martin on American Idol. I used to love that show so much. And hello, madame. How are you? Got some farmer sausage. Butcher told you to put it in the oven for 20 minutes, but you forget the temperature. 350? Maybe go a bit lower just so we don't cook the fats out of it and it stays more moist. Like 325, you should be good for farmer sausage. That's gotta be tasty. Is it in a block or is it just loose? Oh, can we add cheddar to the potato bread, Aunt Sand asked, for a kind of cheddary biscuit? I mean, I don't see why not. I don't see why not. We never know if we don't try. So if you try it out, let me know how it goes. Oh, okay, like it's in a uh, casing, like a big smoky. What's the diameter of the casing? Cause 20 minutes might be a touch too long. I just don't want your sausage to get dry. No dry sausage allowed here. Archangel recently switched from plastic cutting boards to wood. Loving the wood ones much better. I use both. So I don't cut any raw meat on my wooden cutting board. And that's where I bring in the plastic board and do that way. Oh, it's partially cooked already. So then for sure, not 20 minutes at 350. That would be dry as heck. Yeah, like play it safe with the first 10 minutes, about four and a half inches. Yeah, go with the first 10 minutes since it's already par cooked. Sounds to me like you're just really trying to heat it through. And then what I always recommend, right, for if you're unsure if your meat is cooked, use a thermometer. I'm hoping you have one, madame. Use your instant read thermometer and just check the inside temperature. It should be minimum 150 Fahrenheit. And then it'll rest up the rest of the way to 165. And you'll be fine. All cleaned up. Ready to go. Meant to ask, between the jalapeno cheddar cornbread and everything bagel biscuits, Lauren, you can't ask those questions here. Which one is better? I mean, I'm a sucker for cornbread, but Sam really 
crushed it making those biscuits. They were so light and fluffy. Really, really good. But yeah, I still think I like the cheesy jalapeno cornbread. That's just me, though. If I had to choose, I don't know if I could, honestly. Sammy says cornbread as well. Okay, I think we're in a really good spot. Their next step here is just baking these buns off and then cutting up the fish. I'm just gonna take one more quick bathroom break. I'll leave you on the stove cam. How about that with our potatoes simmering away? Hold tight, watch the pot for me. I'll be about a minute, BRB. Okay, I'm back, guys. Yeah, if only you could eat this. It's so good. I'm getting pumped. And yeah, it's so easy, guys. You saw how easy it was for me to bring this together. Potatoes are almost good. Okay. This is my big clean board that I did up this morning. So that's coming over. That's why it's on the cloth there. That just goes in the wash. Nacho man, Randy salad. Thank you for that follow. <laughs> A miracle poi. <laughs> oh man. Oh yeah, Orca? Well, I'm wishing you the best. You know it. Wow. I'm waiting six to uh, 26 of November. Probably not anytime soon, hey? I would say. So here, all our fishes. And hey, Randy, how's the day? So we got one bag of raw white, peeled, the veined, detailed prawns. We have one nice little coho salmon that we gotta take the skin off of and then dice up. Probably have to take pin bones out as well if I'm if I'm sure about what we have. And then we also have to take the skin off of this big piece of spring salmon. Like, look at this. Compared to me, this was, I would say, at least a 25 pound fish that they reeled in. This might have actually been the one that, no, that was the year previous. I didn't catch any fish last season because we weren't allowed to go on the boat unless you were family. Otherwise, they would literally take everything away from you. The DFO said no. I can't fit it. Mm. 
Okay, there we go. I'm gonna start with the shrimp since those will be pretty easy. We just open up the bag and we'll cut them just a little bit smaller bite-sized pieces. Oh no, Annie. Coffee hasn't even arrived and you're out. How are you gonna survive? gonna set a timer for these potatoes in the pot back here do like four minutes on it and then we'll check them I just don't want it to get overcooked right so there's a bit of liquid in this I'm just gonna drain it in the sink and then we can pour all this out I'm gonna have to go with tea do you go with chai or something else Oh, don't leave that scrimpy in there. Those look so yummy. So, so numb. And yeah, I'm just going to use my chef's knife for this. So if we want, we can line up a couple of the scrimpies together. And I'm going to cut these into thirds. That'll be a nice size because when it cooks, it's going to shrink up as well. You're drinking a Sam. Sometimes Dragon Phoenix Jasmine Pearl. I love your fancy beverages, Annie. <laughs> so we're just aiming to get the seafood similar size, right? So when it cooks, it can all cook at a similar rate. You don't have raw fish with overcooked fish. It'll all be perfect. Guess I should have got a big bowl out to pop this all into. That one was pretty small, so I'm not gonna cut it into three. You don't really like Starbucks, Lauren, but you do like their berry hibiscus iced tea. I've heard that one is really good. The other one I wanted to try, I think they have a passion fruit one. Yum. I love passion fruit. They're so refreshing. The one thing that I've been liking from Starbucks, if we've been feeling fancy, oh, is that just a little bit of poop? Let me try and wipe that off. Yeah, that's all it was is the brown sugar and oat drink is really good because i think it's not too sweet there that's okay i don't know what happened there <laughs> he snuck through the wash dirty scrimps Okay, that's good too. Okay, just a quick wash up for me because I forgot to grab the bowl for all of this. He had an afterlife poo. You guys are so nice about it. <laughs> In the nicest way possible. Okay, 30 seconds as well on the timer for the potatoes. So let's come back over. They've still been happy simmering away back here. Just gonna sneak one out and have a little taste of it, see where we're at. Cause we don't want them to fall apart too much, the potato. Wanna keep that different structure. Let that cool off for a moment. I grab the bowl. The buns are almost ready, I would say, for the, for the oven. 
Almost there. This is just for nature. Nature. Thank you. No, I don't think she eats celery. Yeah. Okay, let's try this. Mmm. Perfect. So now, all I'm gonna do, it for sure needs a bit of salt, because I've not added any yet. So I'm gonna do two spoonfuls right now, just to start. And then all I'm gonna do to kind of cool this off is add our peas and corn right now. It was, both of these were frozen. And yeah, I turned off the burner until we're ready to add the fish here. And then that'll take probably a good 15 minutes to get it simmering and cooked through again. But yeah, let's just give this a stir. Let that stuff kind of warm up. We're priming the chowder right now. Priming it. And yeah, I've not added the clams yet either. Do a bit of organization here for myself. What's up? Oh, okay. I think... Yeah, I was gonna say these first two are almost ready. Almost, almost. And yeah, it doesn't... Don't leave the door open currently. It's okay. We gotta keep the warmth in right now, guys, just since we're proof in the bun still. But yeah, these first two are pretty much good. Maybe another five minutes. Keep our other two trays nice and warm. Pardon? No, I think it's fine. That's why I just put those other ones there. If we close the windows, guys, it's just gonna steam up in here from all of the pots going on. Okay, bye, Vune. Sorry if I missed ya. I hope you have a wonderful sleep. And yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. Okay, next up, just going away from the chef's knife for now, but we're gonna hang on to it for cutting up the fish still. Kind of organizing my area. Shrimp's gonna go into the bowl. And then we need our fillet knife. The bubba. The bubba blade. This is what we're gonna be using. This is the scariest knife that we own. Yeah, no worries, Scarlet. We will definitely give you a message when we get to Edmonton. Beginning of July we'll be there, so we still got a bit of time. One other thing I'm grabbing before I get fish hands again is just our tweezers. Taking the pin bones out. Is Scarlet Does Scarlet need a brisket? I don't know. Yeah, this is the scariest knife I own, Dust. It is just terrifying. <laughs> and like the shape of it, right? I think it's scarier than the scimitar. Yeah, is it the scariest because of the red? No. It actually has one of the most comfortable handles. I will say that. Let's open this up. See what we're working with here. You can skin a mule deer with that knife. Yeah, almost, right? Okay, transfer this out. I'm always gonna keep like one clean-ish hand. My right hand's gonna be the dirty hand. It's my non-dominant hand. Whatever hand you hold your knife with or utensils, keep that one clean for the most part. So there is pin bones in here. You can zoom in a bit more. You'll be able to see them. And yeah, you can see how this was packed. We'll be trimming a little bit off of this just because of how it got wrinkled, sad to say. It'll be hard to skin it, but there is a line. If I run my finger of pin bones just right here. And so to take those out, 
We always want to pull in the same direction that they're facing. So I just flip that around so I can go doot, 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 doot out that way. So start on this one end. They should come out pretty easily, especially out of this really small fillet. Can do almost two at a time. And yeah, usually they stop somewhere around the center here. So just keep running your finger. There's one more. Maybe one more or a couple more. Pretty much it. Yeah, I think that was it. Don't feel anything else, so that's good. Now, same thing with the next one is the line is just right here. Yeah, have you played the new game Scimitar City? <laughs> This is the pinnacle of my stream? Why? You guys just love when I get into serious fish mode? And yeah, I always keep putting the bones onto the cutting board. Otherwise, you just make a mess. So see how sometimes the flesh tears anyways. I think that's just because this was frozen, which is another reason why I'm using this piece for soup today. I thought that would be the best use of it because it's not like the most beautiful, but it's definitely delicious still. It's a great piece of fish to cut up and put into soup. Okay, that's it for that. So now we always just first scrape up the discard so it doesn't get mixed into the good fish going in the soup. So get all the bones out. Okay, I think we're good. Should be an emote fish mode. I'm just taking that other one out of the way. And now, so like I said, this one's not as bad as the other one that got really wrinkled. I'm just going to trim up this part. Kind of even it out before we take the skin off. Because that was kind of too thin to do anything with anyways. And then we're just going to do a slit up with our knife. I always bring it right, right to the end of the board where I can grip the bottom of the tail. So get your knife in there. And then it should be as simple as holding your knife at an angle about 45 degrees on the board and you just kind of wiggle back and forth the salmon and pulling it and it'll come off. That's all gone. The rest of that's just fat. So that's totally fine. That actually worked so good. I didn't think it was gonna be that clean because of how the skin was. And yeah, well, because of the scale still on there, we're gonna rinse every piece of fish. We'll give the board a rinse and a wipe before we then cut up the pieces. So this one, like I was saying, is there's no way that we're gonna be able to skin it nice if we don't kind of trim this off, but we can attempt to skin this little bit together if we don't want to waste that meat, but it's only like very, very thin if you look at it. And then there is some stuff that we would have to cut off anyways, like that, and then that would be pretty rubbery. So you decide what works best for you. So same thing again. So 
Oh, I kind of slipped up there. I don't know why that happened, but... Worked good. That's what we don't want to see. So I'd rather have like that on it, right? Than to waste some of the fish. Let's say that. And yeah, you should definitely like analyze how you're doing, right? Strive for perfection. And if you don't get it, figure out what went wrong. Crisp it up and have a salmon snack? Yeah, you could totally do that, Lily. Just pop it in the oven, quick roast up. Would not take long at all, right? Yeah, for sure, Mish. I think you could use trout. Just know that it'll flake up a lot more, though, than salmon, I think, just because trout is a bit more delicate, right? Yeah, just cook it way less. I think it would be deadly, though. Okay, so just turning this, and then the first thing I'm going to do is just trim up this belly part. Let's come back in. Slide your knife under. The little belly bone there. Pick that out for sure. So the first little salmon that we did is a uh, coho. This one is known as Chinook or spring salmon. And then the next thing is this is a bit tough the bone from the spine. So I always try and clean that out as well. But you know what I'm gonna do, I think, to skin this, just because it's really pushing, pushing the limit on the width of my blade here. I'm just gonna go right down the center and cut this in half. And then we'll have nice kind of thinner pieces to work with. So go down to the board, hold your fish firm. We'll do one more. Look at that beautiful filet. That's crazy looking when you cut it like that. And this is all really amazing fat and like nutrients for you. So people that get weirded out by this, <laughs> that's their loss. Cause this is all the goodness <laughs> that we should eat. Bless you. Thank you. That was aggressive. Wish you'd be able to get the points in time for summer. I mean, I don't like to say this, but it does help if you leave a lurk up for getting points quicker. Just saying, guys. There we go. So that's all good to go now. Yeah, bless you. <laughs> me, me, me. To, to, to. Thanks for the follow. Yeah, you're always lurking when you're not chatting. Yeah, right? Imagine if Sam had the mic. Thank goodness. Ears blown off. Okay, so same thing as the last one. This should go a lot nicer as well, I'm going to say. Just watch this scale part there, or the fin. Keep that nice and flat. Slide that off. There's our skins. And I'm okay with leaving this sinewy part on, because we'd have to cut that out anyway. So remember the same way that the tuna the tail part had those sinewy white pieces holding everything together. Salmon has the same thing. Flip it over. 
happiness. What's this? Just need to trim that off. Next. Yeah, two different colored fishies, right? You can see the difference. They maybe eat different stuff, swim in different waters at different depths. Different finches. Again, I'm just gonna trim this off right here as there's some connective tissue from the belly. It's like a hard bone from where the scale was. And then if we flip it over, happiness. And then I didn't feel any pin bones in here, so those are all gone. Okay, now we're gonna do a rinse up of everything. So I'm just gonna rinse with nice cold water and I'll put it in this container beside me. And then maybe we'll just wipe the board really good. Cause yeah, I'm full of scales right now, which we don't want to eat that in our chowder. Almost there guys. I'm getting excited. Ready to nom as well. Okay, cold, cold water, not too high of pressure either because it could kind of flake the fish apart. Yeah, Annie loves word associations, <laughs> but don't we all? Isn't it always a little bit satisfying for everyone? Okay, I'm gonna just use that cloth and then we can get a nice fresh new cloth. Hi, Titan, how are you doing? Welcome. And yeah, doesn't isn't butchering something nice to watch, kick back to you, you learn a little, you're not the one who's stressing. How is Mr. Titan today? You guys jinxing on the real Titan. Yeah, Titan, earlier today, Thrash is still in here with us. I feel so bad for Thrash. Everyone just saw the orange name in chat and was like, Titan. And Thrash is like, um, no, that's not my name. <laughs> but now he's here. Okay, new cloth. Good to go. Yeah, why did you write the same thing at the same time? Bless you. My eye is twitching now, chat. Three sneezes, maximum. Please. Can you move to New York so I don't have to cook anymore <laughs> east side? I would have fun in New York for sure. Okay, let's cut up our fish. Also, I'm just gonna trim off whatever that is. We'll start with these little coho fillets. Bless his little heart, <laughs> Sam. Bumble bunnies, how are you doing? Yeah, four sneezes, that's it. <laughs> okay, so the fish, same with anything else going into the chowder. We keep it bite-sized, so 
we can match it kind of to the size of the shrimp. And we do know that when we cook things, especially meat, is it shrinks up. So cut it a little bit bigger than what you want to end up with. I think I'll cut this actually in half and then in half again on each side and that should be good. It's always weird when you have a chowder that you don't really know what you're eating in it. It's like, I know this is fish, but what is it? So yeah, don't cut anything too small. Oh, there is a little bit of bone here. I think I felt. Gotta get rid of this touch of belly business. There we go. Okay, so everything is lined up. Take our knife go like kind of one inch cubes, let's say. And that way at this size, like I said, about 10, 15 minutes to cook it through when we add it to the pot. Make sure it's all cut through. Beautiful. Next. You like you some seafood, Titan? Me too, man. Me too. I'm gonna cut off this end. It's an interesting color. So this is quite thin up here. So I think I'm just gonna do this into thirds. Who needs a hype train when you have construction vehicles all day? <laughs> Toot toot. <laughs> Forwarded a gluten-free version of the Milk Bar birthday cake to a friend and it came out very good. That's awesome, Annie. I would have never, I would never attempt anything like that to take that cake and make it gluten-free. Terrifying. But that's so cool to hear that someone did do it and it worked good. Great to know. Salmon skin is also God's work. If it's fried properly, it can be heckin' good. It's true. Yeah, as long as it's crisped up. This knife is amazing, Yukon Bear. So this is called, if I hold it up, a Bubba Blade. Absolutely amazing fillet knife. I can't imagine my life without it. So this is pretty thick filet. We might have to trim it like in half. Give me a sec here. This side is thinner, so that is fine. But you can already see like, wow, she be thick. So keep doing our slices here and then we'll just lay that like that. Trying to also keep it pretty even. I know I'm going on a bit of an angle now, but trust. I love seeing the fat lines in there, hey? Yeah, I'm the same way, Lauren. So this is nice and thin on that end, so that's fine. Just deciding if I actually want to cut it. I don't think so, guys. I'm just going to leave that nice cubed up in that size. So just line these up. And we'll come back across and match it to something like that. This one's quite thin. I'm going to divide that in half. Yum. <laughs> that was number four, Orca. He tried to hold it too. He's like, I'm so in heck. <laughs> Don't ask. I'm going to just remove this one because it's giving us issues. Yeah, I think so, Green Fang. Sna Sammy Sneeze counter. I almost said Snammy Sees.
Okay, one more piece. And then that's all of the seafood. Did our shrimp, we did our salmon, and then we have our two cans of clams to add. And I think anytime you're ready, Sam, you can put some buns in the oven. Yeah, those are looking really, really nice. Yep, start with those two and then these other two will be ready. Big buns, you wanna show them before you go? Quick peek. Quick peek at our nice proof buns before they get to baking. Starting with the first two trays, so 350 Fahrenheit for 15 to 20 minutes. <laughs> Sam sneezed and it made Mary sneeze. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, they're so smooth looking, hey? It's almost like pearl essence. This right here, greatest piece of salmon you can ever have in your life. Because look at the meat to fat ratio. Slice that up. If it was fresh out of the water, pop that on some rice. Oh me, oh my. Better? I want, you want me to do it? It's 10 to 15 minutes. Or sorry, no, never mind. 15 to 20. So start with 10 and then go from there. Thank you. <laughs> Shamer Mall just turned on the stream. Seems it's not looking good for Finding Nemo 3. We're not using clownfish in the chowder today. Nemo is just fine, you silly duck. Is there a difference between cheap parchment paper, Annie's asking? I don't know. I've only really used like one brand, which is the one from Costco or the kitchen brand, right? That we order from the supply place. So probably not, I would assume. That would be weird if there was like a cheaper version, wouldn't it? Sammy says he could see there being a difference. I would assume as well. It's like the difference of the heavy duty foil compared to just the regular one, right? Okay, this is getting really thick, so I'm just gonna flop that over. It's about a quarter reduced. Yahoo! Done the other hard part of stream. And we got our buns in the oven? Yes. Oh, really, Torino? You got a cheap box of parchment off of Amazon once and it was more like wax paper? That's good to know. Thank you for that. Okay, I'm gonna wash up, get rid of our fishy area here gonna pack this all together for us. Also gonna wash off our scrimp knife, so I'll put that by the sink. This can just go out of the way. Maybe just put it on the side of the counter if you want, since we got lots of room. And that is our fish, which I think we're gonna get ready to put in the pot right here. And yeah, that's Sneezy. That's Sam, that's my husband, known as Om Dog in chat. He is also a chef. I think he's better than me and he thinks I'm better than him. So there's that. If you're gonna ask who's the better chef. Madame, what's going on over there? Apparently she came home and decided it's time to clean up your whole life and your apartment. How are you feeling now? Okay, hey, let's get a big wash up.
There's a disaster. It's still going. <laughs> but honestly, what are you each horrible at making? What am I bad at making? I'm trying to think. I don't know. You know, life's rough when you can't think of anything bad that you can make. Yeah, Torino cookies. It's true. See, I made the cookie dough yesterday and look what happened. Yeah, call me out, man. <laughs> there it is. And yeah, Sam, I don't know what he's bad at making either. Never experienced such a thing. He says he's bad at making vegan food. Which is a sad excuse, really. <laughs> what happened to the cookie dough? Nothing like too crazy, Bumble Bunnies. It just spread out a bit more than we expected. But I think it was due to the chocolate we used more than anything. Yeah, don't hate on the vegan food. We can make delicious stuff like that. I'm terrified, Orca. <laughs> Please don't make me do that. Okay, I'm just gonna move the buns out of here and then we'll turn our chowder back on. What? Just add bacon to it. Okay, come on over. So here's our chowder we've been working on. It's just sitting with the burner off. The last thing we added was our peas and corn. Our potatoes are simmered through, but not falling apart. And then the base broth for this is coconut milk with chipotles in adobo. And we also added some of our poultry broth to loosen it up as well. So total amount of soup we're probably gonna end up with, I'm gonna say about 12 liters. It is so good, Annie. It's really, a different variation on chowder that it just keeps like making you want to go back and eat more. So then we got all the fish and then here's our two cans of clams. I'm just going to quickly rinse out the brine that they're sitting in because it can be a bit salty, which I don't want to mess up all the hard work we've been doing in that broth. Like, it's okay to add a bit of the juice with it, but definitely not all that's in the can. Just speaking from experience as well. Yeah, that pot itself is 18 liters. If you fill it, fill it. So by the time we add the fish, the clams, I think we'll be close to 12. Okay, so I'm just bringing that up. Got a medium high heat to Get it coming back up now. And then it's just a simple pouring of the fish. Give it a stir and we'll just keep our eye on it. And all we're doing is cooking the fish through. It's not got to boil together or anything like that. Fish is so expensive there. That's the thing, Annie. It's like, this is not super expensive for us to make because we know fishermen, which I'm so grateful for as well. And then just the canned clams, not too expensive either. But the recipe is good. Like, what does it say here? Sustainably harvested whitefish or seafood. So you can use cod, halibut, shrimp, scallop, lobster. I could also go... Could you use like haddock? It might fall apart a bit or Misha was talking about trout would be good. Trino saying even the pickerel prices are nuts. Man, yeah, I can't wait to go fishing for pickerel. Yum. Monkfish I think would work, Annie. Oh, you're from Argentina? Well, welcome in. It's great to have somebody from there. I'm not sure if we have anyone from the community who's located there. So nice to meet you. It's a luxury to buy salmon. So I'm on the far west coast of Canada on Vancouver Island. So yeah, surrounded by water, prime salmon fishing area.
But even here, even where we're located, surrounded by fish, it's so expensive to buy in the store. Still super duper expensive. It sucks. It really does. But I will say it's starting to become better now as there's certain families that have grown up in the area and fished the waters for like ever, right? So now that their kids are older and carrying on the, the business, let's say, they're starting to go out on fishing trips and then letting people order and come pick up from what they catch, which is awesome. We bought from them last year. We did some black cod or sable fish, as well as albacore tuna fresh caught, and it was just prime for the price. You'll never find that in the grocery store. Yeah, if you're gonna buy the fish, it's more for a special meal, because it's so expensive. It's so weird, right, Bumble? Okay, give this a stir, but it looks like it's coming up. Yeah, the salmon practically swims through the backyard. Almost, Annie, almost. Like there's definitely times down by the creek, just a little quick walk down the road. As you can see the salmon coming up in the springtime. Yeah, the fish on the East Coast are quite different. Definitely like Southern as well. Really, really different compared to what we get here. Oh man, Annie. One of your students had it in her exam, forgot to scan a page, but she found it. That's good. Yay for technology. Do you guys see this healthy layer of fat on the top of here from the coconut milk? Now that's flavor for sure. <laughs> Nom. Hi, Wilson. How are you doing today? You're doing great. Awesome. Yeah, Annie's our mather in the chat. Sammy says this after Cohen to check the buns outside. So we know that that's good. Oh yeah, you didn't know that they offer a physics course in high school? I didn't take it because I knew I wouldn't excel at it is I am not, not good at math, but I do like science. So I took the chemistry and biology route. I think he got all his sneezes out, Orca. Okay, yeah, this is just ready to come up. And then we do know that when we add the fish, it's gonna cool it off again. So keep it on medium high heat for a little bit before turning it down. Yeah, marine biology over physics. That's, that would be my choice too, Lauren. One more stir just to help it along. Seriously salivating now, since I know we're almost ready for this. And one other thing we need is just our garnish. So chopped cilantro and some chives. Which while I'm waiting for that, I think I'm just gonna go clip all those chives. Yeah, the brown things are the chipotle peppers floating around in here. We added a can of chipotle and adobo, so it's just a smoked jalapeno that is then cooked with tomato, onion, garlic, and spices. So a little bit spicy, but also really flavorful. Okay, hold tight, I'll be right back. Looks like giant dates. Yes, it does actually.
Okay, now we can leave the door open a little bit since all of our buns are happy, happy. Check it out, fresh picked chives. I did a bit of both. So we got regular chives as well as the garlic chives. Mmm, feta stuffed dates, yummies. Oh, that sounds good, Maya. Dried smoked shrimp powder. I am in. Okay, what is going on with this cilantro? Bottom part of it has seen better days. So I can't let you guys look at it. <laughs> I was like, where's my knife? I still gotta wash it. The Zopa. Mish, you love raisins? I would have never guessed. You guys just sharing, you guys just sharing fruits and cheese. That's nice. Taking care of each other. Okay, I think we're good back here. Ready? Don't plop it in because it'll just make a huge mess. So once again, kind of guide it down the side of the pot. That just got real hardy. Just instantly cooking it. Okay, so we'll want to stir this for the next little bit for sure. When it starts to look like it's getting a bit cooked. Actually, you know what? I'm going to toss all the clams in right now as well. It needs it. Now, give it another stir. Yum. Now that's a pot of happiness if I ever did see it. I just want to keep stirring it and stand in here. Yum. Yeah, why did the name coriander change to cilantro? I have no idea, Boxer. No idea. <laughs> Guys talking about feta, Suki's going nuts right now. Okay, I'm just picking through the cilantro while we have a moment. Not gonna change the view just yet because we're still working on the chowder. Just know that I'm picking the bits out of the herb that we don't want to chop up and use for garnish. That's it. And did you know, I think it's only about 9% of people have the genetics where cilantro tastes like soap. So the rest of y'all are lying. <laughs> Just straight lies. Okay, quick peek. There's our garnish chives, cilantro. Should I just chop this up while we're here? Maybe. Might as well. I'll give this one more stir and then I'll feel good about it. It uh, looks really happy, all this stuff in there. The fish is not falling apart. 
Scrimpies are slowly getting cooked through. Nom. So two separate containers for that stuff. You guys. Out of control. Okay, there's just a few more stems to pick out of here before we start chopping. But it's okay to chop up some of the stems. It, I don't find them as stringy as like a parsley stem. What's up, puppers? How are you? So we're gonna just group all of this together. Sam, are you okay to just watch the pot behind me? Oh, look, just realized I got salmon on me. Have you missed the buns, hun? No, Sam's also watching those outside. He's got his, his timers. I think the first batch is just ready to come out. Bumble's ready. Okay, now we'll rough this up. What are we worried about this pot? Oh, I just wanted you to stir it and see how the fish was doing. I believe there is an add quote command. I've never used it before, Dust. I know that Vune has an possibly cookie. And yeah, I don't usually go super fine with the cilantro garnish for this chowder. I like the leaves a little bit bigger. Pashi, you need to go outside, girl. Yeah, you gotta go for a walk. You gotta go. Where was she being called? Up that way? Go see mom. Go see mom. She's like, I'm not going for a walk. It's almost chowder time. <laughs> hey, you're not supposed to be in here. We'll have to close the door for now. <laughs> Pashi, go see Sammy. First tray of buns is out and it looks absolutely fab. Okay, that's that soapy mess. Soapy delicious mess. Check out our buns. Whoa. Potato buns and they smell so good. Did you temp them? I did. Okay. I was just asking. Yep. 205. 205, definitely done though. Yeah, she needs to get out of here. Posh, how did you sneak back in? What a bum bum. And now we're ready for the next two? Yeah, she's such a sneaker, she is. Okay, I'm just gonna... Because these were from the garden, I'm just going to do a quick little rinsey and then we'll dry it off. Pushing the limits. Oh, really, Annie? A lot of your family is redheads, but you're the one with the brown hair. Okay, so just gonna give that a tap and then come back over. Just wanna give this a stir because it's probably good now that it's simmering. I sent her out. <laughs> They're doing the runaround. <laughs> Posh goes up, my mom comes down to get her. 
Hilarious. She's out of control. Okay, I'm just gonna take out a piece of salmon. See how I feel. And then we'll just taste the broth and season it up. Done. Just move this over off of the hot, hot burner. And then we just got to season for sure, because I have not added a ton of salt yet to it. Nice, Mary. You're killing it. Go, go, go. Pupcake's done. The ice cream is freezing. And now you just got a vacuum. The spice level on this is so perfect. All right, so for this 12 liters worth, one, two, three, four spoonfuls to start. And I got to do a sprinkle in a black pepper too. Healthy amount. Stir that in and we'll give it a taste. Mm, those shrimp pieces, heavenly. Make sure you go all the way to the bottom, just in case the salt sunk. Sammy's getting into, oh my gosh, that looks amazing. A very fresh potato bun. Scooping some of the broth into the spoon. Is that the best bun ever? Mmm. That seriously looks like the best bun ever. Still need a bit more salt, so keep going. We're almost there though, so we did what, five? Let's do seven. That is what I was gonna do at first. I was like, okay, let's play it safe. Because none of the fish was seasoned or anything like that before we put it in. Lots of potatoes, corn, peas for sweetness. It looks really great. Yeah. Well, it's one of my top favorite bun recipes other than the sourdough ciabatta one. Mm. As I keep adding salt, the flavor keeps getting better and better. One more. And then we just let people season for themselves the rest of the way. Yeah, enjoy the bun just alone. A little garlic butter or honey butter. The honey butter would be really good. That touch of sweetness. So go with the potato. Hey, awesome. Awesome, awesome. Just gonna get one more clean spoon. Use that one already. Don't burn our mouth. I don't know what that is, Orca. Mmm. We hit it. That's when you know. Yep. When you're like, yo, that's delicious. You added enough salt. It almost is like Cajun-esque, right? Like you get a little bit of the smoke from the Chipotle, but not a ton. Like it definitely doesn't have a Mexican sort of flavor at all. Definitely more like Southeast Asian or Pan-Asian. For sure. 
especially with the coriander and the cumin as well. Yeah, that is one of my favorite, favorite recipes. Okay, now that that is done, we can just pop the lid on it. Just looking for the lid. Bringing that over, rinse this out. And then we'll just finish up our garnish. And then we can plate up, taste up, away we go. And yep, I've had clotted cream before. I made sure that I had, what is it? Scone and clotted cream or just biscuits? Biscuits and cream when I was in the UK with jam, one of my faves. Yeah, strawberry preserves and the clotted cream. That was exactly it. <laughs> so weird. Okay, so now we're just gonna thinly slice either chives or green onion. And that also gets sprinkled over the top with the cilantro. And then, oh, there is one other garnish. So all of that love in the soup and then three awesome garnishes fresh. I always serve it with a little lime wedge for like bright freshness to finish. All things are good, Sama. Okay, that works good for me. Okay, maybe a few more, just of the longer chive pieces that snuck through. There we go. MSG is the, the flavor enhancer that you were talking about. So one thing that I've learned is MSG is a naturally occurring sodium, pretty sure is what it is. So yeah, it's already naturally occurring in a lot of foods that a lot of people aren't aware of. The freshness, just gonna give this whole board a wipe with our fresh cloth. Getting it ready for a photo and a plate up. Hey, that's my other favorite preserve, Bumble Bunny, is either strawberry or apricot or peach. Peach might be top tier. That's a rare occurrence. And Asuna, thanks for the follow. And welcome Raiders as well. The Cosmicat crew. How's it going, friends? How was the day? How was the stream? What did you get up to? Feel free to share. Hello, B. Sultan. Cat, pleasure as always. Our fellow Canadian as well. Norwegian Herring, welcome. Nosheral Beauty, hi, hi. So you guys are coming in at the perfect time. You can see kitchen is a beautiful mess right now. We just took these fresh potato buns out of the oven, getting ready to plate up our Pacific Rim chowder with salmon, shrimp, and clams. Oh, deadly chimichangas for the first time. How was it? I've never made that either, so I'm intrigued. Hey, we just need a bowl, I suppose. They are incredible, yummy. Yum, yum. What did you put inside? What did you put inside? There's like so many routes that you can go, right? Black bowls for Sam. Oh yes, just our lime. Just our little lime wedge.
Oh, deadly steak fajitas. Yum. Well, thank you very much for the raid, cat. I always love hanging out with your crew. Mm, maybe that's too much. We'll hang on to this other one, too. And then, yeah, sounds like you had a delicious day. Now it's time for us to keep spreading the deliciousness. Yeah, hi, Asuna. Welcome in. Happy to hear that you like what we're doing. There was steak, bell peppers, onions, pinto beans, homemade nacho cheese sauce. Oh man, I am a sucker for that. <laughs> Deadly. Yeah, Annie, how am I having dinner before you? What the heck's going on here? So I'm just gonna trim off each end of the lime first. And then pop it on the nice flat side so it's safe to cut. Usually go in half and then instead of actually wedging, I'll just go like this, down the center and then down the center again. So we get this like awesome thing to grab onto those two corners and it just juices perfectly. One, two, four, six, eight. What is my little reso list here? Okay, that's perfect then. I guess this is extra for us. Extra. You are Mexican? Oh, I cannot wait to come travel into Mexico and really experience the cuisine there. I really think it's a place that we're probably going to gravitate to in the wintertime. <laughs> in the truck. All right. I'm going on over. Check out this stovetop here. Oh, look at this closed lid. Yeah, check it out, guys. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. So we've been working on 12 liters of chowder today. Some of our friends are coming to pick up some foods from us as well. That's something that we started since the pandemic. They've been supporting us in our small business endeavor. So yeah, give that a good stir and then we'll ladle into the pot. You can see how hearty it is though, right? And yeah, I like how it's like brothy, but then there's just full of all this goodness. Fish, veggies, potatoes. So I think I'm good with that. I do just a touch more of the broth. Thanks, Asuna. Yeah, I always compare when I'm cooking at home on stream with you guys to the restaurant days when it was super stressful, 12 hour days, no breaks, you're standing forever. It's super, super hard. It's like every man for himself, even though you're a team still, this is way more fun. I get to meet so many awesome people online. So excited to be here, yeah. Hey, let's get into it. Nom, 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 nom. Okay, first thing, let's sprinkle our cilantro. And you know that it's a strong herb, so a bit goes a long way. I like to just kind of keep it congregated in the center to start with the garnish. And then you can spread it out with your spoon as you eat it. So same with our little bit of chives. The chives can go a bit more closer to the edge. How I like to plate them, cause they'll float. And then up to you where you wanna put your little lime wedge, right? If you pop it up in the center, it should be pretty easy to grab for somebody. And then to finish it off, we grab one of these fresh beauties. 
They're so light feeling. It literally feels like a cloud. And I love the way that the top like wrinkles up as it starts to cool off. Look at the bottom. Yummy. So that's what gets served with that, whether you need butter or not, right? So I'm just gonna take a quick photo. We'll taste together. Yeah, it's okay. You still got the timer on the other buns? Okay, because I don't. And that would be a saja. Oh yeah, the cookies, Suki. <laughs> I love how Dust says perfect, when really they're not, not quite perfection, but still really good looking. It's like for some reason, the outer layer of the egg wash and the sugar kind of splooted out, but it got super crispy and like caramelized, which I'm into still. Time for the photo. I think I gotta give this just a wipe here. Wipe the lens with the clean cloth. A pad of butter on clam chowder? I've never heard of that, Lauren. But I'm into it. And then a close up. There we go. All right. I'm grabbing a spoon. I am so ready for this. Yeah, I'll take a dozen. <laughs> First things first, let's get limey. So see how when you squeeze the lime like that, you really just get all the juice out compared to a wedge. I love it. Stir the garnish in. Holy, that lime juice everywhere. All right. I don't think I got any scrimpies in this bowl. RIP. Mmm. Oh, the lime juice really makes it. That's seriously so good, guys. I love the peas and the corn in there for like pop and sweetness. And thank you very much, Dust Pirate, gifting the sub to Maya More. Dust, you've already gifted 76 subs to the channel, my dude. Thank you. Thank you for that. Helping to build up our delicious community. Yeah, welcome, Maya. Maya is a fellow Canadian. Maybe we'll meet one day. Okay, going in for a scoop with this salmon, and then we'll go for a dip of the bun. Yeah, meant to stop at 69. <laughs> but that's what the spoonful looks like. So you can see it's a nice loose broth. Potatoes are like just, just starting to fall apart, but the rest of the veggies are all holding up. Very colorful as well, I would say. Mmm. Seriously, every bite just makes you keep wanting more and more. And now, Nom. Like, it's literally so pillowy. I would sleep on that. I would. Look at the way that dipped in, sopped up all the goodness. Mmm. I think those are the most flavorful buns ever. The potato flakes are so good in there. 
It's soft, it's got sweetness, but it still holds up as well. Madness, I tell ya. Madness. <laughs> yeah, wake up hungry, just take a bite. <laughs> Yum. Baked perfectly. Yeah, good job, Sammy. Thank you. Yeah, the little clammies in here aren't overcooked either. I hate when the seafood's like rubbery in a chowder. It's like, what happened to this? In my mind, pretty perfect. Pretty perfect? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks, Cosmic Hat. Thank you. Okay, we had a few bites of our late lunch, early dinner. And now, turn that off too. Yeah, good slurp of approval. Cookies. These insane cookies. Just move that over so I don't drop crumblies in there. I'm going to take this one out. <laughs> what? And Huega Hunica? Thanks for the follow. Mm. So salted chocolate shortbread. You hear the crunch? Like the outer edge is so crisp. And then the inside is just like butter and chocolate. <laughs> Not allowed. Did you get any scrimpies? Oh, thank you. He donated me a scrimp. Oh, yeah. The kind of cookie where it just kind of, once again, sits, sits back here in your cheeks. The flavor is endless. It's so heckin' good. It's not too spicy. And just the flavor is so different. I'm a loser. Thank you so much. 13 months in a row. Gotta love that number. Thanks for hanging out for over a year already with us. It's always lovely to have you. Yeah, those are money, that recipe. Beautiful accident, for sure. I really like these cookies because as you can see, it's not too sweet. It's rare for me to just stand here and eat our dessert like this. I usually have like two or three bites and I'm like, that's good enough for me. I think it's also using the dark chocolate there, right? Thank you, Mary, for the hundred biddies as well. Yeah, my happy dance. Sometimes it comes out, I can't help it. Yeah, I'm... Like a kaiju? What's a kaiju? Let's learn. <laughs> I like that word. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, Sammy's done. So I'm just gonna put two lids on our fresh herb garnish because it could dry out. We'll pop that into the fridge. You didn't eat the chipotle pepper, my dear. I just wanted to see what he would say to that question. A Japanese genre of films and television featuring giant monsters. <laughs> Sammy's kaiju for sure. Yeah, that's perfect. Mmm. <laughs> Still munching through that chocolatey cookie.
Oh, thank you for your service, Maya. Yeah, rescue the bumbler that came in. It's like, I think you got lost there, bud. Buzz, buzz. Okay, I'm looking for someone for us to go raid now. We had the awesome Cosmicat raid earlier. Hopefully they stuck around for our plate up, saw the deliciousness. Now we got to go spread it. If anyone has any recommendations, let me know. Oh, there's lots of good stuff. Wait, is today the pizza party day? Yeah, yeah, so you're eating all this. Okay, I'm sure we're all gonna end up there anyways and see how this pizza party pans out. Seems like there's been a lot of hype for it. Oh, Dust says Amanda's doing for charity. Annie's going over to Joyce's. Sounds good, Annie. Yeah, see you tomorrow, hopefully. Okay, we're gonna do ingrediology. Excuse me, felt of approval for the chef. Oh, thank you. Dying llama backflaps or backflips. Thanks for the follow, I suppose. As long as no llamas were actually harmed here. Yeah, no worries, guys. Feel free to disperse wherever you want to go. I'm getting this set up. Hope you guys have a rest or a good rest of your night. I can't talk anymore, so definitely we are, we're done streaming for the day. <laughs> it's usually how it goes. But yeah, thanks for all the love today, friends. Lots of awesome kind of newer resubs, like the two or three months. That means you're new here, guys. So thanks for sticking around. Happy you found us. All of the above. Hopefully we inspired you guys to cook up something tasty for yourself or someone else because Sharon is Karen as well. Save those recipes that we linked. They're also in Discord, so you can always go search back for them if you don't want to save a billion bookmarks on your browser. And other than that, so we'll be back tomorrow, 11 a.m. Pacific, cooking up more tasty stuff. A roasted crispy pork belly rice bowl with steamed bok choy. We got some nice fresh green beans. Just pop them on there for now. And we're gonna be making a soy ginger glaze to go with that bowl. And then tomorrow's dessert is a Southern caramel cake. So a layered cake and it's supposed to be absolutely amazing. Okay, I hope to see you then guys. 11 a.m. Pacific as always. Take care, stay safe, love you. And if you need us, you know where to find us on Twitch and Discord. Okay, bye! bye.